business on items not on the agenda. Mr. Hyde, are you here for a specific item or did you want to talk about something else? I'm just uh, interested in topic that's going to be discussed about the roads. Okay, fine. Where do, you, where do you live? Apple Hill. Apple Hill, okay. Thank you. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? All right. The Lincoln Tax Closure Treasurer, you're up. Okay. Um, just a quick status on the delinquent taxes. We are down to 14 taxpayers who are working on their 2018 taxes. Of the seven parcels that the board motioned to be sent to Gloria Rice for collection, all of them paid in full except for two, and those are numbers uh, 10 and 14. And there's a, a little spreadsheet behind the uh, software printout. So, so 10, and 10 and 14. 10 and 14. Did not pay. Correct. Nor, nor was there any contact or attempt um, for payment. So that's where we are. Uh, number numbers. Number six one, and okay, number seven. one. Agreed. Number one is. Agreed to make, start making payments good. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, that taxpayer died. It, the estate is sufficient to cover that, but they're working. We just have to wait for probate. Um, number three, they're, they've contacted me. They're going to pay that balance with a credit card. Number four, if that property is for sale, that will ultimately get paid. Number five is on a payment plan. Numbers six and seven, interestingly enough, called today and said um, that a payment of 7,000 would be made in 12 days. There's a refinancing afoot. However, the very last thing that was said before hanging up was, if I can't do it, I'll call you. So okay. I keep I've heard from um, I've heard from number six and number seven um, every time I run into that person, I'm gonna pay it. I'm gonna pay it. Okay. Well, I, I kind of feel like we sh I, I feel like we should believe them. I, I defer to the board's discretion on this. It's 10,000 out of 27,000 outstanding. Mm -hmm. So it's a six at once. Well, like, let's, see, let's see if he pays in 12 days. And if he doesn't, um, we'll have to decide what to do next. So the next few are um, very small amounts. The folks are paying $50 a month. They're, they're just... Um, chipping away at it, and uh, number 12 is on hold per your, the select board's uh, motion. I think we're going to hold off on that until October. Right. So, very good. Things yeah. look good. Excellent work. Thank you. You're welcome. That's, that's, I think, historically, this is the lowest amount of billing for tax dollars. No, no. Last October was $6,500. Oh, but we're not in October yet. We're not in October yet, so we're, we're going to see. That's right. <laughs> it's going to be. It's, it's going to be. be. Maybe it will be zero. That would be lovely. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, and then just to follow up on a directive, uh, although, and I think it was an informal directive of the board, to maintain a ten thousand dollar balance in the town hall. Let me just do this for a quick second. So I guess. Yeah, no, we made a motion on that. To um, maintain a ten thousand dollar balance in the town hall reserve fund, mm -hmm. the uh, and the rest of the fund, approximately forty nine thousand dollars, was allowed to be used for town hall renovation project expenses. So we are at the ten thousand eight hundred and seven dollar mark essentially left in the, left in the left town in the hall, hall um, renovate uh, reserve. reserve fund and ten you're ten eight you said ten eight so um, bills will continue to come in and I have begun to simply post against 
the town hall res uh, renovation project expense line, we're at negative 64, almost 6,500 dollars on that line. I there Did will say amount 64 or 65, 6,500, 6,494, 6,500. So just to keep the board apprised, uh, there should be grant reimbursement money for the accessibility phase of the project. John McCullough projects that will be in. Sometime at the end of October, they are projecting that to be around 30,000. They're working hard to figure out how they're going to finance or deal with the um, septic system. Mm -hmm. So back to the town hall reserve fund, with the beginning of the new fiscal year and the inputting of additional money, is that an amount? Oh yeah. That's gone too, okay. Yes. The FY20 appropriation, it, that's it. That 10,000. 10,000 is gone too. So, um, and the grants, is, you expect 60,000? Well, no. I am told 60, but I know of 30, and then, 30 is what I know. and then someone mentioned there was another 30. I am not specifically aware of that, so I cannot discount that nor confirm that. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that there's 30K that we're supposed to get from the um, accessibility. Mm -hmm. That's what is He's, projected to come in in October. I don't know about it another third. And then I thought I saw an email that said there was another 30, hmm. but I'm not aware of what Maybe there's another that benefactor would be. that we don't know about. No, it was. That would be nice. It was um, suggested there was another grant. I don't know about it. Hmm. I, I said that. put on my thinking cap or we'll go back and do um, so that's where we are, and I just wanted the select board to know that what the effect of um, this continued and ongoing spending is, is basically to utilize our fund balance to cover this, these expenditures. Until we get reimbursed. Until we get reimbursed. And I don't know what the extent of the projected expenditures are mm -hmm. above and beyond that reimbursement. So I'll keep you apprised so that you can be aware of that. Um, I am unaware of any other uh, coming donations or any other plan for generating additional funds to cover what may exceed right. grant income. So you should just be aware of that because I'm writing checks and you're not seeing these balances on a, on a regular basis. Well, I'm wondering a couple things. Um, just to update the board, you know, since Ernie Parrish died, Green Line Builders has been going through some difficult times. Um, so I know John and Donna were going to meet with Jackie, who's the bookkeeper for Green Line and try to flesh out um, what's going on. So, I mean, it's been a really difficult time since he died. The other piece I'm wondering is if the next town hall meeting, if we should have a budget discussion. Because I know that your figures and Donna's figures don't match up. And I'm not sure how we're on a cash basis. Right. I don't know what it's not accrual. It doesn't reach back. Mm -hmm. Whatever you had in the account mm -hmm. and whatever you have spent yeah. is simply net out. There's not any other money on the side mm -hmm. or that we spent in 2017 and was reimbursed in 2007. It just you are where you are <laughs> for now. Cash it's that's so, it. Katie, can you put on my to do list mm -hmm. to um, scheduled for the next town hall meeting, which should be September 5th. Um, maybe we, I'll ask Donna to put it on at the end of the town hall agenda to talk about the, the budgets, because I think we need to get this figured out. To I, clarify, can I, it's yeah. the town hall committee meeting. Right, town, yeah, that's mm -hmm. it, town hall committee. Um, I think, Sorry, sure. no, it's okay. I think we should also be Pro, you know, we should be really clear right now what our 
tolerances for overspending because right now we're 6500 100. right um, 30,000 from accessibility. I'm a, so a question I have is whether um, that 30,000 can be used for, it can be used, as, are we going to be able to use the whole thing, you know, do these accessibility spending authorizations match up with where we're actually spending in a way that's useful? I, I have no idea. Is um, Makes sense. Yes, it's tied into the lift primarily. Sure, but so but the question is whether there are other aspects to be um, ADA compliant. The bathrooms, right? And so other portions of so, it. So so it that. so have we already spent money on those right. accessibility things? So what we yes, did, we so we'll we get reimbursed. We put, we put money up front. Right. For some of the ADA stuff, okay. and this will be to reimburse us. Okay, so is the whole 30000 that's coming into the good, or do we have more money left to spend on accessibility so that that's... I think the money left to spend on accessibility is... It is I think it's pretty minimal. It's pretty minimal. Okay, it's so like faucets, you know, special faucets. Okay. Hands free. So beyond that, though, so that's great. So yeah. that will that will offset the $6,500, mm -hmm. but... What I'm hearing is we don't know how much is still out there for bills. <coughs> for bills. Well, and then part of that is to get together with Jackie from Greenpoint right. to see where things are at. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, things are still happening over there. They yes. are. The John McCullough is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. That's great, and I. That's great. I still feel like our job is to is to express our uh, where our tolerance point. For right. Well, I think that we're spending without knowing where the money's coming from. I'm going to ask. John, I asked them about coming to tonight's meeting, and they wanted to wait until after they met with Jackie to come to the select board. So I'm going to ask them to come to our September 9th meeting and give an update on the town hall project in general, budgets, where we're at, all that. But that's two or three weeks of possible spending. It makes me nervous. Two. The only other activity that's going on there is already work that is under contract. Okay. So we're not spending additional funds at this point. Yeah, the Perrys um, did their stuff. Right, and so there's still some um, employees of Green Line that are working for jobs that are already under contract. Under contract, i.e. we've already paid for it? Some of it we've paid for up front. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And, okay. They, and that's what we're trying to get a Don. handle on. And okay. Donna's figures look at the contract with Green Line and say, okay, this is money already spent. Mm -hmm. And your figures are only going to look at money that's actually been spent today. What we actually have mm -hmm. minus what right. we have spent because that's what you have. Right, right. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I understand what you say, but what the two of you together just confused me and concerned me again. <laughs> well, I think, so just from a, we are on a cash basis, so from a cash basis standpoint, what I would say is what are the checks that they anticipate writing in the future? What is the income that they anticipate receiving mm -hmm. in the future? And that's in the delta. It, I mean, it doesn't matter what they're, well, just from my standpoint and a cash flow standpoint, what comes in minus what goes out, that's what is going to affect the town's fund balance ultimately. Right. So I can ask Donna to put together something that projects what you're saying. The what's left to to be what what bills do we anticipate we still are gonna need to pay? How much money do we think we're gonna have coming in to pay those bills? And where's it gonna come from? Right. And when you say money is already spent, the Green Line money is already spent, does that mean Donna's already accounted for it in her spreadsheets, or does it literally mean that Sanders paid all the Green Line bills? I think there are more Green Line bills to come, is what exactly. I understand. And, and I don't want to give a number because of numbers consider the whole okay. of that contract. Right. So it could because be, it could okay, okay you've got this $6,500 hole, but then this 30000 comes in and goes for money that's already been spent, so it covers that 6,500 hole and then gives us some extra room to wiggle. Mm -hmm. I can say that um, when I was coming back from uh, the airport yesterday and coming home, 
I uh, thought it would be a really nice treat to stop and get some corn at uh, at uh, Moore's Farm, and I ran into Donna, and her and John um, are very sensitive to where we're at on things, and yep. they're working yeah. to make sure Honestly. we're not spending oh, yeah. anything oh, yeah. until they've had a chance to sit down and reconcile okay. with me. Right. Okay. And that's, and that's, yeah. yeah, they're very concerned. Okay. And they're really working really, really hard to make sure that we're on target. Okay. And it's at the top most of their frustration. Okay. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, they're, they're not. We need to, yeah, I think we need to trust them. I, um, I think the project has been very well managed. I don't, there is not a question in my mind that the project has been well managed, but they're also, been. when you're dealing with an old building, there are there are there are surprises. There are just simply surprises that you just can't. And then contractors for. didn't show up when they were supposed to. And well, we had bad weather. And there were a number of things. Right. Right. Well, you know, the thing was is everything started out so good, right on track. Yeah. Everything was running smoothly, <laughs> and then the, the other shoot dropped. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the okay. fact that Ernie died has really thrown a right. a wrench into right. this. And Lisa's trying to figure out bank accounts and. Depositing money. Right. Yes. I know it's hard. I yeah. know it's hard. Yeah. But but I, I appreciate hearing <laughs> that Donna and John are at paying very close oh, attention yeah. to this to the negative to the arrears and um, yeah, yeah because what we obviously want is we what we don't want is for is for what's still out there to be more be more than thirty thousand or more or than more than what right twenty four thousand five hundred. And more than what other grant money might come in. Right. So I think Donna's got a really good handle on spreadsheets. We just have to reconcile them with yours. And I think the fact that it goes over two fiscal years for not with Donna's stuff. Well, that that's that's fine. But you you're that it's. This is what's in your, basically, yeah. your bank account. It, yeah. it has nothing to do with what has happened over two fiscal years. But that's how Donna's looking at it. Well, I understand that. Right. But you have a hard number of a negative right. $6,500. Right. So that, that's, right. I don't mean to, and, and believe me, I think the project has been great. I, I don't see any frivolity in that project, no. anywhere that corners could be cut and maintain the integrity. And, and and the quality of the project, they've done that. Um, my purpose of being here is not to discount that, but oh, just no. to right. advise you of a Fact. of a number mm -hmm. that I see every day, but you really don't. Mm -hmm. No, we appreciate that. So that is That's my, right. I don't want to come in here and have you say, what do you mean we are $25,000? In the negative, right. that I don't think you would appreciate that. So that's no. really what I'm. No, you're doing exactly higher. what you're supposed to do. But I have no criticism. It's just information. I didn't hear criticism. Oh, good. No, no. <laughs> I didn't hear criticism. No, I didn't hear any. Um, and yeah, thank you. So and now, can we just talk briefly about yeah. um, the workstations? Oh, right. oh. Um, yeah, it looks I was here. expecting to, to walk, I, as I got out of my car, I thought, oh, it's going to look all different. And actually, it, it didn't. That's because we have the. No, it, it looks way bigger in here. I it think. does. And the little reception area is very nice. So I would really like to point out that the reception area has is is much more welcoming, much more spacious for folks to come in and for multiple people to do various kinds of business. Mm -hmm. The listers are able to spread out and in fact today a John was meeting with a townsperson and that person was very comfortable. She, she was able to pull up right to a desk and work with him on the computer and see what it was he wanted to talk to her about. It must more spacious for them than crammed in that little corner, it, right? It is much more spacious. We're going to have um, Andy come in. They would like a couple of shelves to lift uh, their books and files and so forth off of that desk to make that more, um, uh, to make it an easier workspace to work on. Well, after I after Rick purchased his service last week, I stopped in at the office in between meetings, and Judy was showing me how all the stuff in there, all the wires and boxes and flashing lights, are all 
like in one place now so you're not tripping over things, you know where all the wires are. It was fabulous. I, so I, I, I'm not going to give up my opportunity to say that Holland from RB Tech came and he did a great job of rewiring us. We have had virtually no glitches. He was gone, everything was up and running, he cleaned up all the wires, he labeled everything. It's very neat and tidy. He has, um, and it, it was a pleasure to work with him. He made suggestions, uh, he was working with Andy talking about where we can put our technical Equipment device. Are you going to say stuff? stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the technical oh, yes, stuff. I was going to say stuff. something else, but I won't. <laughs> no, I was really going to say stuff. I was going to say stuff. And um, so that was very smooth. The one thing. <laughs> Judy had a glitch with. But that was a cot thing that, that they needed thing, yeah. to just reconfigure something in right. the computer. And that happens periodically. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I, I'll put in a pitch, and then I'm sure you want me to go, but um, Holland did say that. Is this this new, new computer? Yes, that we have three computers <coughs> that are scheduled to not be, uh, that are on Windows 7. Windows 7s will no longer accept security patches mm -hmm. after. Um, the beginning of next year, January 1, 2020, it expires. So he, um, in due diligence, advised us of that. And um, beyond that, the next question is, once we're all on Windows 10, your dutiful little treasure says, oh man, so we're all on Windows 10. When does Windows 10 go down? Mm -hmm. And that it will be, I believe it was October 2025, okay. we'll have seven or eight computers and various devices that will need to be replaced. So we'll want to um, think about that for budget purposes as we go along. It's not that bad. We'll, well be, I would, I we'll have uh, several Katie, years to work on it. Katie, I had Katie post your, um, yours or Judy, oh, I guess it's Judy's email with the ticket for, um, we need to, re we need to do the, um, public computer, and then we need to replace um, Alfred's computer at the town garage. And, and then the Lister's computer, computer and Barbara's, Barbara's computer. And we, you said we have enough money in the budget to do that? The tech... Um, 2434 is the reserve the, fund. The, the tech reserve fund will cover the laptop. The, those are the most expensive devices to replace. The desktops are not. The towers are, are much less expensive. You're talking about the laptop for the public? Uh, yes. So mm -hmm. you, the select board has already identified uh, that money to come out of the tech fund for the laptop. Right. Depending on what you do with your IT contract, it is possible, again, depending on who the board selects, if there are additional funds there that we can purchase those uh, devices, the computers that we need before the end of the year out of that line item. For well, there's and for Barbara. Yes, there are, and highway would come out of highway, but right. his has to be replaced as well. Yeah. Why are we? Why if laptop is the most expensive? Why are we? And why are we buying a laptop for public use? I mean, it's going to be a, a, in a fixed place. Um, I, I don't know why that. Why yeah, that, that doesn't make much sense. Kids really a matter of convenience. It's easier to move it out of the way if we need the space on the countertop versus having a, a desktop tower or whatever. Um, so so it's kind of What's the difference annoying. in price? About $500. But he figured the tower would be between eight and nine hundred dollars and the laptop would be maybe twelve hundred. Yeah, well that's, yeah. That's yeah. Um, yeah, I actually in this email that he's pricing the desktops for the office there, around mm -hmm. $1,500 a piece. Well, that's with the install. So install him coming paper. out, he and would come out, up, set right. it up, okay. uh, pull everything off of the existing computer, get it all into the new computer. So um, that was included in that okay. price. And will the laptop that's available for public be a single unit and that somebody who's researching will be using 
this screen, or exactly. will it be Something hooked like to a monitor? No, it'd be like this. Although we could set it up so that it could be paired to the monitor if we thought that no, was. No, no, no. That's not what I was advantage. thinking. I'm just thinking that when you're looking at some of those documents electronically, having a bigger screen, we can get a a large screen laptop, but that's going to be more expensive. You right. could also just get an, an inexpensive larger screen to plug the plug in. That's laptop yeah. into. But then you're moving something big. Right, but very right. small profile. I mean, it's nice. I mean, we need to be able to supply the public with something that you know that they can use. But so you you do this. You go into town offices. Right. What is? I've never your seen view? a laptop. It's always been a Set. desktop. Mm -hmm. Is that is that convenient or inconvenient when you're using it? If you're trying to say look at a book, one of those big books, plus look at a computer, what works better? Uh, well, generally, you generally the, the the computer is. I mean, they're all the town offices, as you know, are set up in any number of different ways. Right. Um, I just I just know that. You know, sometimes you're looking at a map mm -hmm. on a survey on a screen, and they would be here, I believe. And so having having some, you know, a little bit of scale. Can, is if you are looking at one of those documents, can you send it to yourself to look at back at your office, so that we're not having to? No. I can, I know. I mean, we want to make sure that people have no ability to look at things, but and, and that's not a that's not a lawyer limitation, that's a town office limitation, because then you'd need the computer that you're offering to public set up somehow to an email. Instead, what they are is sent to a printer, so that you can print, print a document. Right, and then you're, you know, then, then you're, which is good because you're keeping track of your pages that you print and you're mm -hmm. paying for them. I would suggest if, if they haven't purchased the laptop, because we do need to move on to our next agenda item. Right. Um, if they haven't submitted the no, purchase order yet, it would make sense to ask them the question, could we save some money by looking at a, a desktop and larger screen option? Uh, the only, uh, I, and we'll do that, uh, I think one of the considerations was, was simply space. Right, yeah, I don't know where, where we where put a public laptop, how, public at, computer. The way the office is configured at the moment, even as we have cleared a, a way, a laptop would be the easiest fit if right. you put a narrow table here right. or whatever. That's um, what I was going to ask, is are we going to put a table oh, there for the public? Yeah, that's fine. So I mean, it, that it, it, might have been, I think, the thought behind that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally workable. I just was kind of wondering. We, if we had the laptop too, it's going to have Bluetooth compatibility. It could be easily, if there was something where you, a larger screen was really needed, it could be easily patched up there. And I can't yeah. imagine it's no. We spent way too much time on this. <laughs> right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, I, it's, we need to supply the public with a usable computer. Yeah. To what degree? I think is the, the big issue is being able to print it. Yeah. That, that is the big thing. Yeah. Well, our, it's connected to a printer, and you say yes, this is the document I want. Do we print? I mean, John Lenz isn't here yet, right? No. No. Well, again, I introduced that topic mm -hmm. just to put it in the back of your head that we probably need to move on the replacement of mm -hmm. our Windows 7 devices before the end of the year. Holland. So before the end of the year, so you don't, you're not going to order them right now? Well, we'd or? have to have select board approval for that uh, right. because of the purchase amount. Mm -hmm. So we would await your consideration on that. Yeah. And we don't have a... They're not budgeted, so you know. Again, your consideration for how you would like mm -hmm. to manage those purchases mm -hmm. would would be necessary. Well, you just let me know when you want me to put it on the agenda. I think we can table it till the November RFP. Yeah. Um, and you had wanted to be on the last meeting of the month to go over budgets and that kind of stuff with us to let us know where we're at. So maybe we can do that at the end of September? Sure. Okay. See, there's not a, a whole lot happening that first right. week I mean, we of July. Have I will say that um, let's brand see. New fiscal year. We, um, we're collecting taxes 
And so we're not, we're, we're really in great shape for managing our bills. Mm -hmm. Our bills went out within five days of last year's bill. So we were not uh, much impacted by the forced merger in terms of getting our bills out and getting mm -hmm. tax money in. The order on that that is before you tonight is 153. Just so you know, it was a $153,000 order. So mm -hmm. we're really heavy in the beginning of our fiscal right. year. Yeah. So it was very good that we were able to get our bills out. So a couple things for the to-do list, Katie. Mm -hmm. One would be to make sure we check in with the office staff about when we want to order computers. And um, Oh, I know. The other to-do thing. When do we expect the auditors will want to come? Do you have any idea? I still hear from them almost once a week. Because I know we paid them a bunch of money. With various <laughs> tweaks and so forth. So they are still working their way through our data. They have not asked to come back. Um, I was expecting them to be done sometime at the end of, well, sometime in September. Yeah. Okay. Just let me know so and enough in advance so I can make sure we plan enough time for the auditors. And maybe it can happen. Maybe it'll be the last meeting in September when you come so we can all be on the same night. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. They haven't told me that they were ready to submit a draft. Yeah. So they have made um, some suggestions and so forth. It's a, it's a nice working partnership. Good. Yeah. That's great. Anything else? I can't think of anything else. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. No, that's me taking up too much space. All right. So while we're waiting, maybe he got lost? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, let's, let's um, hear from Alfred. Um, what's the status of the... Rental aside, iron lower. Uh, it's here. It's been out uh, two days. It was out last Thursday, and it's out today. And that's the uh, three thousand dollar a month. A uh, week. Three thousand dollar a week. John, yeah. John said he checked and it was John a month. John said he said that's right. He said that it was three thousand a month. That's probably in January. <laughs> but I don't know where he got that figure or where he I don't know. came from. I have no idea. I have an invoice. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Thanks for Kate. You're welcome. I have an invoice that says nine thousand per month. Um, I mean, yeah. So it's three thousand per week, and the last week, the last week is free. So you pay for three weeks, and the last, the fourth week is free. And they delivered it on their nickel. So I think they cut us a little bit of slack there. Um, but it's here for a month, and we're going to use it as much as we can. Um, and we've talked to Doug Grout about running it for us, mm -hmm. and it dawned on me that now he's not a contractor, he is now going to be an employee, so we have to run him through the drug test and mm -hmm. all that stuff before he can operate. Mm -hmm. So that's going to slow us up a little bit as far as him operating. I mean, we were, I was going to put him on tomorrow. Right. Is he interested? He's interested. He only wants to do two or three days per week. Mm -hmm. um, so he would be kind of like a part-time, like Ed or somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah, he would be a part-time, but still still needs to be. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we need to do it right. Yeah. Because he has to be covered by the insurance and, may, and everything. And maybe when I tell him that, it might change his mind. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't see why it would, but, you know. Who knows? Know. Uh, so I will have the ladies in the office schedule that. Okay. Uh, screen. Sounds good. The sidearm is the thing like we've seen in East Montpelier that has like a yeah, bendy a, elbow. It's a tractor with a with an arm and a mower on the end of it. So cool. we've been cutting the the grass for the second time around and also some brush as we go because this machine will do both. Is this, is this will do the brush the stuff the, up here yeah. that we talked about? Yeah. Can it get under fences? Does not do very well under fences. I would think because it might it's get too big. Because it, yeah, it's too big and the fence posts are too close together. I mean, you need forever. Doing that. You don't know where the bottom 
about but it. We have been getting like over the guardrails because it kind of reaches over the guardrails and mm -hmm. you can mow the back side of it. Um, so that helps. But mainly we're just cutting brush and trying to get the second time around. Yeah. But it takes a long time because with the brush you gotta stop keep stopping backing up, reaching mm -hmm. out, you know, moving the arm to get it to right. Uh, and it's a brand new machine for us, for us, all of us. No, right. We've never run one, so we're, we're sort of You'll learning. figure it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, I, we're figuring it out. Yeah. It's, it's working, so. Um, so and are you renting it just for the month? I, I mean, that's what I've rented it for so far. Mm -hmm. If it's still available, if they, if they haven't got it spoken for for somebody else, then mm -hmm. we can use it. And we have money, have money in the budget here. for that? Um, no. Not as far as the roadside mowing, because we already spent half of it for the first mowing, right. and this is going to be more. almost double what the second half of the mowing is. So we're we're going to be over for our roadside mowing. Yeah. Can you put it under equipment hire? Um, could do that. Yeah. Yes. But does that help? Yeah, because there is money in the equipment hire, mine item. Yeah. There's right. I mean, but that's yes, we can do that. But yeah. that's gonna that will be sort of hurting too because we fired the trucks, a couple of trucks for hauling gravel and yeah. But I, I would certainly look at that when I put it on the work orders to yeah. see which which is the best way to yeah, good idea to pay for that. And the new or the new the least the truck new, is here. The new truck is here. It's actually in Morrisville at the body. Uh, manufacturer's mm -hmm. place uh, yeah. should be having that. Well, it was they were telling me really good things in the beginning, but <laughs> then I guess their schedule got busy. But we're still going to have it by November. Right. Yeah, because we have snow at the end of go. October. Yeah. And so I'm going to continue. Last year, the S word. I know the S word. Yeah. 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 Can you grab that flower thing and put it over there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all in your face. Yes. Um, anything else at the garage? Um, no. We, I went and bought a trailer to put the new hydro seater on. Um, because the other trailer that we had just wasn't big enough, wasn't heavy duty enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so I upgraded the trailer. and in hopes of selling the old one to get some money back out of it. It was the trailer that we used for the mulcher because mm -hmm. the mulcher didn't weigh nothing and it was it was very convenient at that time. But with the malt with the cedar it holds through that 300 gallons of water and so it's yeah. a lot heavier we needed to have your new trailer. Yeah. So I've got that purchased and it's all set up. We sprayed some green stuff today on Kent Hill, some bitching that we did. Mm -hmm. So that's working out really well. Good, good. Yeah. Um, we've been hauled, we hauled some gravel to, last couple of weeks we hauled gravel to Wheeler Road. In Long Meadow. In Long Meadow. Yeah, I saw some invoices there from, I guess it was a Minot, was it not? Minot, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody, somebody I was talking to drove up one of those two roads recently, right after you put on and they said it was Beautiful. Mm. Yeah. That you guys have done a really nice job. Yeah, that gravel really works well. Packs down nice and hard, and it's, it's really a good gravel, yeah. so it uh, makes a lot, of, a lot of difference. Right. What other pro what more projects do you have for the summer? Uh, we're still working on culverts, putting in some of the culverts that failed from spring. Mm -hmm. um, and Still waiting to hear for the George Road project, that grant. Was that the one we didn't get? No, we got the grant. Okay. Uh, but we're still working on the sizing of the collar. Uh, the state is looking at it. Mm -hmm. it might even be a bridge. There might, might be saying that it might be, have to be a bridge instead of a collar. Really? But That's a lot more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Our engineer, Doug Newton, is working with the state to come up with a with the sizing of mm -hmm. whatever structure is going to go in there. Yeah. This is at the bottom of George Road? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but we took a site visit when we were doing the Armstrong 
farm thing. I remember that. Yeah. 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 I mean, that culvert's over top a few times since I've been here. So yeah. just figured that would be a good one to get. What's happening with the project on Moscow Woods right here, that corner? There was a uh, good, there was that the one we didn't get the grant for. You mean by the post office? Yeah. Uh, we're still waiting on the uh, regional planning commission. They were supposed to do an engineering study and come up with a plan. Oh, okay. Well, that was on the list for this summer, though, right? Was it? Mm -hmm. I thought there was a culvert thing right there by the driveway to the fellow. Is it fellow's property? Yeah, but there's no grant money for it. Okay, you were just going to put in a new culvert. Box culverts? Well, they're talking about. Uh, or is that, are we talking about the same thing? They were to, they're talking about water that's coming off of Baton Road. Yeah. And their idea was to put an underground drainage system under the post office parking lot. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as I know, it hasn't, it hasn't gone through. They were still talking with. And that's CBRPC? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. They were talking with the, the rec department to see if they would allow something dug underneath their yeah. parking lot. And so there's still a lot going on there, a lot more work to do there before we can break ground. Mm -hmm. But I've done the ditching, I've cleaned the ditching up and whatnot on Baton Road and kind of tried to slow that water down. Mm -hmm. Because of the problem down that's, that's down over the bank is how that whole issue started. Right, on right. John, John Rissey's property. Yeah. So I'm trying to contain that water, slow it down just so it doesn't keep making it worse. Right. But there's more work to do there, of course. Okay. Um, anything else highway related? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, we're just trying to get projects done. And the last few rains that we've had, there's still these little keep wash, wash spots keep popping up. So Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, like I said, sent a grader out today to get two or three of them and yeah. to fix them up. So it's just kind of maintenance. Are you John? I am. Hi. Hi. Have a seat. Join us. Thanks. Well, it sounds like everything's going moving right along. Everybody's getting some vacation time and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Both side Hi. late. Did you get lost? No, but I almost did. <laughs> no, I get was, lost everywhere I go. So no, I just kind of. Lucked out, actually. Oh, okay. Very good. Thanks for Hi, coming. Folks. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, well, actually, it was Matt that Matt. got it all started. Thanks, Matt. So why don't we introduce ourselves? I'm Denise Wheeler. Hi, Denise. Hi. Cliff Emmons, Cal Select Board. Hi, Cliff. I'm Rose Falchuk. I'm the Select Board. Hi, Rose. I'm Katie Lane Curtis. I'm the Reporting Secretary. Hi. I'm Sharon Winfan. I'm on the Select Board. Sure. Richard Hyde says... Yeah. Yeah. Alpha Larry, the road commissioner. Hi. Brian Lee Curtis, right. citizen. Yeah. Hi, folks. So I'm John Lenz. I teach capstone engineering at UVM, civil and environmental engineering. And uh, Mac reached out to us and said, We've got a challenge. Would you be up for it? And it sounds like it's something. Sounds like you're up for a challenge. We are. We are and up for and a I challenge. sent you a whole bunch of stuff to look at. I don't know whether you had time. To I read did it. go through it. I didn't read every page, but right. I did read it and I got a flavor of what. Right. So, just for a little bit of history, Callis is well known for its citizen involvement and participation complaints. Sometimes we get compliments on roads. Several years ago, <laughs> Alfred's laughing at. <laughs> Um, no complaints and compliments generally, but... Well, well... And you're, you're unique. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know how many... It seems like Calus has really a vocal community, which is good. Sure. You know, and that's the way it should be. Um, several years ago, we established a roads committee, and they wrote up some road standards. Um, they've been reviewed by the state, and the state has signed off on them. I sent you the, that document as well. There's some frustration, I think, on both sides of the coin from the, the road crew that some of the standards or some of the things that the Roads Committee had suggested that they do a certain way for whatever reason, um, and we've got to get to the, to the bottom of that, this piece of it, is, you know, why doesn't, why can't you do it? 
and they probably have some very good reasons why. And then the Roads Committee, on the other hand, says, you know, we worked really, really hard. We put in a lot of volunteer time, did a lot of research, did a lot of work. Why aren't some of these standards being followed? So that's one piece of it. Then last winter, we had um, a real outcry. And you remember what last winter was like? It just, like, snowed <laughs> all the time or rained or something, which made it challenging. Calus has a huge distance between the Maple Corner, this side of town, and the town garage. So we asked Alfred, and that's what I was going to ask you, to check in with like Worcester to see if we could stockpile or use their stockpile and pay them for it. So there's all these pieces. And one of the sets of minutes that I was looking at, we came up with several different ideas about what we might, of what the issues were. So this is how this all got started. And Matt came to one of the meetings. And he says, well, you know, I think I might be able to get you some help. I was like, yes. We're all about having some help. Um, so we put together a list. So you're the, what was that word you used? Your, 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 your Shadashi? Was that yours? That wasn't me. That wasn't you? <laughs> Something about Yushadi crowdsource data collection application. That wasn't this. Oh, no, that was um, Rick King. Oh, that was Rick. And uh, it's an app that you can use for any number of community involvement projects, be it a roads, um, be it roads conditions, um, a lot of communities use it for emergency uh, okay. I thought it planning had and engagement and whatnot. I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember how it's pronounced, the application. Yeah, it doesn't matter because it doesn't it's interesting. I mean, I did look into it, um, mm -hmm. and it is something that we could conceivably utilize, um, but it's something that we would have to you know, put on and budget for and yeah. get approved. Right. Manage, monitor. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Matt came up with a suggestion, which I thought was really interesting. I had no idea that there was any such group as yours out there that works on this kind of stuff. Um, we also have our operations, winter operations plan, which I sent you. And the rodeos, as I learned the term, are like six hours long. And one of the people that came from VTrans that I asked to come from Vermont Local Road said, those are really too long of a time span for a route. So with everything considered, I guess we're looking to you to see what you have for <laughs> ideas or options or suggestions. Okay. Sure. So let me, let me Before we get started, anybody want a cake, Mac? I haven't had my supper yet, so I don't think I should start. <laughs> okay. oh, oh, no, I, I think so. It's not frosted, so no, and it looks like it doesn't have any calories. It's helpful. It's really oh, helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got vegetables. Chocolate. 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 That's dark chocolate. So it's both dinner and dessert. Right. It's got dark chocolate in it. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. We need that serotonin left. Okay. Thank you. So anyways. Um, so, yeah, I was going to tell you what... What your pro what, what is we your do? Plan? You know, yeah. So we uh, we have senior engineering students, civil and environmental engineering students, and they spend a whole year, two semesters, working on a project. We almost always we always actually have been doing community service projects, which means that you as a community partner provide what I call a boots on the ground kind of knowledge, the kinds of things that you can't get out of a book about what's it really like to do something here. That's our man there. Yep. And uh, and we want you to get involved in, in as they work, and I'll talk about that next. Mm -hmm. And then our students, with support from faculty, sometimes outside advisors, will figure out first what, what is it that you need done. I mean, mm -hmm. we're starting here, but you know, what, what can we boil that down to? What can they do within their time? They have, oh, each student probably has around five hours a week. They have a team of four, so you have 20 hours a week, 12 weeks, you know, so 240, you know, you might actually get somewhere like four or 500 hours worth of work. Wow, for free? Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't charge. Um, it's student work, so it's not something if we came up with a design you could put out to bid right away, but 
what we usually do is projects like this where they're not, and maybe you're a little more immediate than typical, that there's some time to work on this, to, to sort out some ideas, to mm -hmm. give you some direction, and then you potentially hire a consulting engineering firm or an architect and, and, and take it to the next step. So it's to sort through ideas. Mm -hmm. um, what I understand of the project is, when I talked to Mac, hopefully I inter interpret it right, was you've, there's a long way between one end of town and the other, Lots. and if you've got to keep going back and forth to right. reload a truck, it, well, you're not doing, you're not plowing that. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the other part was, I think, prioritizing where you plow uh, to, I guess, make most, the most people possible happy. If that's possible, right? Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Is that my yeah. getting it about yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But then I, it, I think that to me sounds like like the engineering um, problem solving part of it, and then there's the almost the the mathematic part of there's X number of guys, four guys. Um, right now they're doing six hour right. um, loops on an eight hour shift, does that make sense? Is there a configuration that works better? Is there a configuration that would allow them to say, wait a minute, um, tomorrow's gonna be a beautiful day. The storm is coming tomorrow night. <laughs> How do we, you know what I mean? So yeah. in terms of just planning, yeah, planning the, and plotting the, the, the time, their time, um, and their shifts, that's, a, that's a, to me, is another, Piece of it, and I and I would understand John if he said, "Yeah, we don't do that." Um, that would make sense to me. On the on the other hand, it's an important part of the equation. Right. How do we bring that perspective in? From right. okay. how do we best manage the time? Yep. And do we have enough crew to do what we're asking? Mm -hmm. You know, or you know, do we need to think about a part time? Winter person, should there be, as Rose has, has said many times, you know, should there be a person out plowing when everybody else isn't? Alfred has a legitimate concern with, you know, he doesn't want one plow driver out there alone. Mm -hmm. If he goes off the road, we don't have cell service in Calais. Yeah. What good's the radio going to do you if there's nobody on the other end to hear you? Yeah. So, you know, there's all these varying pieces. So have you done something like this for other uh, towns? Me, no. I don't know that actually in the, I don't think in the 14 or 15 years that we've done this, we've actually done something like this. Oh good, so we're unique. So unique. Uh, I talked, so we have a range of uh, faculty that have different specializations. Mm -hmm. We have some transportation specialists. They call this the traveling salesman or saleswoman problem. Hmm. Where if you needed to go to so many different places, how do you where do you where do you start <laughs> so that you probably don't overlap any more than you have to? Mm -hmm. So so that was intriguing to them. Right. We also have at least one engineering management student in the course this year, so they've got some interest in that. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm going to caution you to say that probably each storm is different, mm -hmm. and so you know I don't know. But maybe we could we could work with you to come up with some guidelines. And the thing is, I don't think you should count on us to give you the answer. Mm -hmm. I think we you we could maybe you could ask us questions, mm -hmm. and we could try and guide you in a direction. But I think it's going to be case by case, as far as the storms and the situation. Right. But maybe we can narrow down to some things. Maybe so. What we right, we what you have the benefit of is so these students can do some research. Mm -hmm. They can do some literature reviews and see what other people have done somewhere mm -hmm. else in the world even, talk to faculty, and just kind of do something that you may not have time to do. Right, and I think maybe just somebody a different pers somebody different looking at what we do and how we do it, you know, when you're right kind of in it all the time, whether it's Albert or if it's us, you know, what can we do different? What are we missing yeah. that might work better? For instance, you know, could we put a sand pile or gravel pile, whatever you call it, someplace else so that there isn't the need to travel so far to reload. Um, look at the length of the rodeos. Do we have enough people to do what we want to do? And then you said there was also an environmental piece to this which would play into our road standards. I'd really like to work on that. So one of the requirements 
for these courses is uh, for our accreditation. Uh, we need to have two engineering disciplines or more involved. What does that mean? So if we had, say, pure transportation, traffic, then we need to have something structural or maybe stormwater or geotechnical mm -hmm. because these are practice projects for students. Mm -hmm. So, so our, the accreditation group says you can't just do one thing and have four students work on the same thing. You have mm -hmm. to work as a team. You have to usually then when you have two or more kinds of things to deal with, they conflict. If I did a great job on stormwater, maybe it's not going to put the salt pile in the right place or the best place. Put it in the most convenient place, but then it's going to be a real difficult stormwater uh, environmental right. issue because right. I don't want the salt running off into the stream. Right. So that's okay. I mean, that's real world every day, but that's that's what we would do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think this can be a good project. I don't want to overpromise what we can do. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, we're just I mean, grateful for some different yeah. perspective. And there's also, I mean. Um, just so you know, for an upcoming, maybe some of your students to know, is we're going to be meeting. We're going to have a meeting that's going to be with CBRPC, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. They're going to go over our road erosion inventory. And um, they've done a really good job. I'm, I'm thinking, I think it's going to be the meeting of September 26th, I think, I, or no, September 23rd. I can get back to you on that. Okay. It's a public meeting. Your students would be welcome oh, to come Oh, I think we want them to go there, or at okay. least to, to talk to you about what the stormwater issues are. I saw some things about um, sand and not sanding and right. running off and that sort of thing. So I don't know if we can completely solve that because that's a real common problem. Right. But maybe well, I'm just saying this might be educational for them to come to the meeting when CBRPC is going to be meeting with the select board to go over this report that they did. And is it an evening meeting? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they should be able to, you know, it's a bit of a drive for students, but, you know. <laughs> they're going to feel like they're really in Vermont. Yeah. Isn't Capstone in Barrie? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. This is, this yeah. is a different Capstone. Yeah. It's, yeah, so. it's, it's like a Capstone in the term that means like their senior project. Oh, because I'm thinking it's Capstone nothing nothing to do with no, yeah. nothing in Barrie. No. no. Um, Oh, it's, it's, it's a human services. Oh yeah, right, right. Yeah. Well, they do more than human services. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they, they do. They've got the same name. Yeah. But. So I was like, what is that? How does that work together? I guess it doesn't. Yeah. <coughs> so, I mean, maybe I should uh, just listen a little bit and just tell me if. Right. Well, that's what, what I thought. What you're hoping was, we can do. Well, that's why I thought it was better. You had suggested maybe meeting with Alfred and then us, but I think we work together more as a team yeah. with the road crew. Um, like it or not, sometimes. But <laughs> um, and then there's also Vermont Local Roads. Yep. And they have a workshop coming out, snow and ice. Are the guys going to that? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if your students might be interested in that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, I think, I guess what, maybe you have more questions than what we have. How does this start? What do you do? Oh, okay. So how, what's the process? So we, we I'll pitch the project to the students. Mm -hmm. I will tell them this is, and, and hopefully I capture what's, what's needed. Mm -hmm. And in the next week, starting this Wednesday through next Wednesday, I will tell them in about 10 minutes or so what the project's about, mm -hmm. why you need it. I'm going to need your help to completely explain that, mm -hmm. give them a few photos to hopefully hook them in. I mean, we want to entice them. Mm -hmm. They bid on these projects, or they propose, they, they give me a letter that says, I would like to work on this project first, first priority, second priority, third priority. Yep. This is why I've got these courses that I've already taken, mm -hmm. or I'm taking, that qualify me for this. And even if they don't have the right courses, I'm really interested in it, I'm willing to learn. And then we, I, I and my colleagues pick a team of in this case, it'll be four students, mm -hmm. maybe five, but probably four, and uh, they go for it. So the first thing is we need to entice the students. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've got about at least I've got 13 projects going this year, or I need that many, and I have somewhere between 13 and 16 project possibilities. Mm -hmm. I don't have I have one other transportation related project, and I have a few students that are in that that are interested in that. Mm -hmm. So I think they would be interested in this. Although, 
Some of them, when they know that it's an hour and a half away, mm. they say, oh, I'm not sure I want to go that often. So, but we've gone to Derby, we've gone to Manchester, oh, we've gone town. to Lebanon. Beautiful I know. Palace. I know. How can you get any better than that? <laughs> um, they can come stay at my house. Well, the thing is, I need to also get a team that has the ability to travel. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think they could. So, so that's the way it works. So I would tell you next, by the, well, by either next Friday or the following Monday, mm -hmm. what the choices were, if they, the students right. said, yeah, we're interested in this. And I want them to hit this project right away. And right. Start pulling out some plans, meeting with you, and, and getting. Yeah, I mean, meeting with Alfred and the crew and the operations manager, and then circling back to meet with the select board, what our expectation would yeah. like to be, um, would be really good. Well, and that's, that's the other part of it. So we kind of have a plan now. We, we might say we'll leave with the, these are the things to, to look at. Mm -hmm. They'll come back and give you a scope of what they want to do and some deliverables that they think they understand you want mm -hmm. schedule. And then there could be a little negotiation or you say, yeah, that, you got it about right. Right, I mean, I think one of the things they should do, this is just my thought, is they should go to the town garage. They should see the equipment. They should meet with the road crew. I think that, for me, has always been helpful. Well, until you, you see, can't, yeah. right? Because you can't. You got to. You got to talk to the boots on the ground, hands on the wheel people, really. And and I'd love it if they. Uh, I'd want them to at least see what's going on in the winter time. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't want them to have to bother you, but you know, maybe right after a storm. No, we start about two thirty or one. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and if they've got a CDL, great, right? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So that's the way to know it. That's the way to see well, what we right. do, what we, what we, you know, have to go through in a typical storm. You know, some students might say, and if you're serious about putting them in a the truck, maybe you're like four in the morning or something, you know. Or, well, although coming out here in a snowstorm might not yeah. work. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, right. They'd have to sleep here or something else. Right. Yeah. We knew a storm was coming. <laughs> but, you know, that's... But if you get a student that's super interested, you might be up to that. Yeah, he or she. He or she we've right. got, we've Even got if it's just her. one student yeah. to do it and report back to the other students. Yep. But that's how you're going to get the real, the real ability to see what's going on out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, is to do it when we're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's the three o'clock in the morning, it's the cars coming at you, it's the snow blinding you, it's the you know, the tree that we can't cut because of the side of the road. You know, it's those kind of things that that people need to see before they can fix this problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it, so sometimes we run into situations where you can't fix it. Maybe you can make it a little better. Maybe that would be something we'd come back with. Well, mm -hmm. here's some right. tweaks. Right. I right. think some things that would help us would be just plain information. If they could do a study around other towns, how many road crew members, how many miles of road do they maintain, mm -hmm. you know, what that kind of, of stuff. What kind of road? How many, what yeah. kind of roads? How what many, what, how long is their rodeo? Mm -hmm. Right, how long is it taking mm -hmm. to do the, to the plow road? Right. I mean, that kind of stuff would be helpful for us to see if we are we behind? Are we? Do we have enough manpower? Do we mm -hmm. not? Comparative yeah. to miles of road. Now I know every town's got a different type of miles of road, but we're maintaining 73 miles of road here. Back with road. Back road, dirt road, yeah. with four people. Town of Worcester has 21 miles of road, and they have three people. East Montpelier has four people, same number of crew, but 64 miles of road. So we're way up on our miles of road yeah. versus... And they have a men. person, don't they have a person who does an odd shift in East Montpelier? I don't know that they do Anymore? now. I know oh. they did when Mike Garen was there, but I'm not sure that they yeah. do now. I don't know. I, I, don't I know agree it. with what you're saying, Alfred John, when you were talking a few minutes ago about the ability to do research, I think one of one of the challenges we have is, um, you know, we're we're a volunteer board and select boards are in Vermont. Alfred is busy maintaining roads. Um, and so we are pretty myopic in trying to solve problems, which is not to say we don't, you know, talk to other people or, yeah. but being able to, in a discipline focused way, systematically gather information and consider its relevance to us. We're, we're we're a long ways from ideal on, on that. We all have various anecdotes, but nothing particularly scientific. And, and I feel like that would be really, really helpful. I'm just gonna say, I, 
I don't know, but I'm not an engineer, that our biggest problems are really engineering so much as they are, there might be some engineering tweaks or certainly kind of systems issues that we could address and that maybe that's your second discipline, I don't know, okay. yep. systems. Yep. Um, but in terms of road engineering, is that really, that? Well, that well like you could, you could consider it in terms of engineering, you could consider logistical engineering. Right, that's well, a, systems. Right, logistics. that's a yeah. fair amount of what we're dealing with is Absolutely. how do we best deploy our existing resources and are our existing resources adequate to the task at hand? And I agree with that. Yeah, I think that's, whether, a, that's a big whether question. Whether that responds to your students. And how do we come up with a system that we're not just reacting to people's complaints? You know, how could we, what could we, how could we send out better information to the townspeople, whether it's posting on the website, whether it's posting something on Front Porch Forum, whatever it might be, because this, the way this came about was we had a, several people who wanted to share their displeasure and their concerns. <coughs> Excuse me, last winter, and last winter was unusual. You know, it was a regular good old-fashioned winter. <coughs> How can we do a better job of getting information out there, explaining to folks how this works and, and why. You know, why, why is it that you don't plow from nine o'clock at night to three o'clock in the morning? Because that was one, there's, you know, people that work night shifts. Night shifts, mm -hmm. they're coming yeah. home. Yeah. And, and they can't, and they're having trouble getting home because the road isn't plowed. But we also have a responsibility to have us, our crew be safe by having so much time off to sleep. Yeah. No, right. So exactly. you know, how do you how do you address that problem? You know, and then I just wanted to mention, Brian, you're a some kind of engineer, right? I'm some kind of engineer. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a civil engineer. Civil engineer. Now Brian is Brian lives in town. I'm hoping to recruit him for the roads committee. Um, cause we're trying to revitalize the roads committee, and getting people to volunteer is like really really hard. I and the roads committee is discouraged. Rightfully so, because they feel like the work that they put in isn't being respected. The roads crew. No, the roads committee. The roads committee. Oh, okay. Feels like their work isn't being respected for what they suggested. But my question is, is maybe some of the suggestions just aren't doable for whatever reason, whether it's <coughs> engineering, manpower, supplies, materials. <coughs> yeah. Those kinds of things. Physics. Hmm? Regular physics. So that's something that we need to work out. But I, was say, I, don't, I don't know if you want to throw the students into that, but I was going to mention that something that would be probably really useful if you come out of the student projects is the on the mapping and presentation. And you know, I don't know if your students have like JS capabilities and things like that, but like putting together a map of like what are the rodeos like here's four trucks in four different colors and here's all the roads they have to go on and be able to present. They, if you right. run the traveling salesman problem a couple of times to be able to present like, if we change this, here's how it looks. If we change this, here's how it looks. Right. And you know, even some like time domain mapping or things like that, I think would all be great results that mm -hmm. you can get out of a Right, but you can't project. be everywhere at once and you can't, and you know, everybody wants their road plowed first and you, you, you generally do the school bus routes and the milk routes first, right? The, and the main arteries. Well, there's one thing that the um, the Roads Committee, um, and I served on as a select board liaison, um, identified all the roads in the town and made a color-coded map, mm -hmm. and it has the um, the connector roads, you know, the main drags, the secondary roads, the low, um, low use roads or whatever, and so it would be interesting, and I've thought about that too, about the rodeos or the snowplow mm -hmm. things, you know, does it hit all the connector, the main drags? You know, are those the primary bus routes or whatever? You know, because when you think about it, Callis really is quite a bedroom community. So a lot of people here leave and go to work, of course, in Montpelier or Burlington or whatever. So you want to get those connectors. Is there a you map? Know. Do you know where that map is? Okay. That might be helpful to John to have for his yeah. students. Yeah. Is that color coded map? And yeah, I mean, it was color coded with highlighter, you know. Oh, but yeah. I think I have that. I think I yeah, I have. I, I know I have it at home. Yeah, that's a good idea, Rose. Yeah, 
I mean, and, and to be fair, the Roads Committee put in a ton and ton of work. Alfred was on the um, committee. We're trying to, you know, it's, it would be nice if people could work together and come, okay, well, this doesn't work. What can we do instead? You know, what is the compromise that we might do? Okay. So I see that the road, the, the plowing, as one item, piece, right? one piece. So that's one engineering discipline, I see. Mm -hmm. Is it realistic to think about another one with your salt piles or not, or, I mean, or, or something else? I think I saw something also maybe with uh, stormwater uh, runoff, maybe from an existing, or maybe it had to do with the way the road was shaped somewhere. Um, getting that right? I think that's a big part of what the road committee was looking into was the uh, runoff from the roads and, and right. you know, ditching, ditch. You know, they have a lot of uh, silt and sediment going into streams and stuff, and trying to control that. Right, and that's yeah. part. Of it's, it's pretty hilly here, and a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, you know, when it rains, a lot of the uh, road silt and stuff goes into the streams. And I, yeah, and the road crew, to their credit, they've been doing a lot of work on trying to. Um, you can't eliminate it, but to make it less less runoff, they've been putting a lot of time into putting in new ditches and culverts and things like that. And also, this road erosion inventory that I was telling you about that CBRPC did is helpful with that and in incorporating into some of that into our standards. But we're not looking for solutions on that. No, CBRPC is really the one helping us with that. I'd rather have your folks. I don't know if you talked to Worcester. Did you talk to Worcester yet? I did. And what did they say? He said he had limited space for another pile. He's only got a bucket of uh, backhoe. Mm -hmm. uh, so to load the 10 wheeler, you're going to be 20 minutes at least. <laughs> All right. 20 minutes? Well, I mean, it can be looked at, certainly. Mm -hmm. But that 20 minutes that you drive, well, it's going to take you 20 minutes to get from our town line to the sand pile in Worcester, another 20 minutes to load it, another 20 minutes to get back to Callis. So now you're an hour and a half, you're easily back to Callis Pit by then. But if you're in Maple Corner, it's not going to take you 20 minutes to get to Worcester. Oh, yes, it is. With, with, a, ten, with a ten wheeler with chains on it. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, that's what we're looking at. We've got a ten, okay. it's a ten wheeler that does that really. You guys are the ones that drive it. I'm and, just asking. What um, about you small player? Uh, you small player might be an option. We've tried that before. But then again, it's a timing thing. And I'm not trying to just say no to everything because I've looked at it. But you still got to have a bucket loader there mm -hmm. or pasture them with theirs. We're all going to be out at different times of the day. Right. Um, it's just not that easy to, to put a sand pile somewhere else. Well, and I don't know if that's something that you think about here. Sounds really easy. You know, yeah, it sounds yeah. easier than it is. Yeah, Everything it always sounds easier than it is. But you've got to look at the whole picture, which right. is another can. bucket loader, another, you know. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. A bunch of guys shoveling. <laughs> cool. So, number one, snow removal, like when it gets done, how long it takes. Mm -hmm. The sequence. Efficiency yeah. Yeah. and responsiveness to citizens. I mean, I think one of the, I mean, these are students. They've never driven a, I don't think, a plow truck. Right. right. Well, most, so, most residents haven't either. So, <laughs> they just like to, you know, well, say how they think it should be done. And, and when Rose talks about main arteries and, and Connector roads, secondary roads, right. low use roads. Uh, all of those roads are dirt roads. <laughs> like right. the main drags in Cal's are all dirt roads. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just, have like how many just conceptually, you know, planning around this kind of a community instead of a Burlington community. Well, we have, right, we have three county roads. Like different. Three, three miles. miles. County road is three miles. That's paved, but that's a town maintained road, not a state maintained road. And we had a lot of issues last year with. County Road, for instance, mm -hmm. and Alfred um, bought that. What's that stuff called? That's magic, magic salt. Magic salt, which is supposed to work at temperatures. Because what I've learned from Alfred over the years is that salt doesn't work at a certain temperature. And this new stuff, this magic salt, that's made from some kind of brine, works at a lower temperature. And you tried that, and it, it did work better. But still, the timing of putting it down, you know, everybody wants it down before they go to work. Mm. 
And so sometimes it, it, it is and sometimes it's not because sometimes the road gets covered up quickly with more snow. You know, that three miles of county road and all the complaints we had about it, that could be a project almost in itself yeah. looking for us. And, and that is kind of a merging of disciplines, I think. It's, it's the fact, it's a weather, it's weather science and how the storm comes in and hits county road. Um, it's timing, it's what materials are you using, it's speed of drivers, it's communication. Right. right. So that, that discrete problem could be a second piece that couples with the logistics of of the roots and manpower, right. et cetera. I mean, right, no, I agree. And what Alfred has explained to me over the years is people will say, well, it's always better at East Montpelier. Right. But, the, and part of what that. What do they say in East Montpelier? Right. But, the, <laughs> and, and, but, but oh, it, it is, it's true. You can tell when you've gotten to Callis, and what Alfred has explained, we're higher up. We get the results from the Worcester range. So having someone look at that piece of it so we can honestly say. Actually study that little tiny issue of. Right. I mean, you know, some of that is really true that it's just the effect of the location. Elevation. The elevation is just different. And you try to explain that to people and they just think you're, you know, blowing them off basically because they don't, well, what do you mean? Sounds it's like excuses. We're just sounds like excuses, excuses but yeah. you try to, so I'm hoping out of this we can have some kind of documentation Maybe we, you know, maybe we need to update our winter operations maintenance plan, but also some hard, fast facts that we can publish and say to people, this is it. This is, we had this study done, these engineering students. So it's in somebody different than us or the road crew handing out the information, the third party. I think it will go a long ways. Well, and hopefully it'll give us, here's, some, here's two things we can change. Right. Here's three things you could change and be, it would be a complete waste of your time. And, and then how that gives us information then we can, how do we message around right. that? Yep. I mean, that, I, I like it because there's a lot of public involvement here. Mm -hmm. uh, if we got the students here maybe once for either a select board meeting or some sort mm -hmm. of a meeting. Right. You know, after they talk to you and say, so here's their presentation. I think my sense is student reports get, people are, are a little more polite to students. <laughs> you know, they'll the hold back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that they send a good, the students send a nice clear message saying, you know, everything's, the, you're doing the best you can, but if you want to do better, you need to do right. X, Y, and Z. By the way, that's going to raise your taxes by. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's, and, and I think you know, if they wanted to even make a trip to the town garage to meet with the crew and see the equipment, maybe ride in the trucks, even before it snows would be very beneficial. Just to, just well, to see just the hands-on, hands-on. Right. Hands well, even the widths of the roads, mm -hmm. you know, are there places where the roads are either the slope or the width, make it especially oh, yeah. hard? Oh, yeah. All of them. All of them. All of them. Yes. All of <laughs> Never heard you guys complain the road's too wide. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and that's one of the things we have, these differences of opinion in town, you know, the road crew needs to be able to maintain, right. go down the road safely. And people, there's other people in town that they don't want to see the roads widen because that's part of the beautiful right. culture of Callis is the roads. I know. I'm it's chuckling because I have a friend that lives in Rupert and he says, I think their mission on the road crew is to make the roads all real wide. That's what people Why? Because yeah. they plow them and they're, they're in the mountains. Well, right. once you got the erosion, you got to have room for a ditch. you got to have room to push the snow. Right. It's not just because we want a super highway through town, it's because it's, it's, it's difficult to maintain when they're very narrow. Yeah. Right. But we also there's have more traffic nowadays, too. That's another yes, there factor. Is. That's right. something that we could do a study. The kids could do a study from the, the amount of traffic we have now to the amount of traffic we have 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago. Do we have data from 10 or 20 years ago? I don't There's got to be somewhere and out the there. Regional the regional planning commission. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Dan, that would be, Dan that's, Courier. That's an important factor that, that people right. don't understand. Right. There's a lot more traffic out there. There is. There's a lot more demand. I can vouch for vehicles that. vehicles now are smaller. The vehicle's tires are smaller now. You know, you see people right. driving little Subarus, little Priuses. They're, they don't get around in the snow like they used to. Right. right. And so 
the yeah. demand is up on the on the highway crews. All of us. It's not just Callis. Every every crew member that I've talked to said that last year is not a year to compare to because mm -hmm. it was it was just a brutal winter. Yeah. Well, and I think okay. that CVRPC Van Courier, he's one of the people who will come to this road erosion inventory. Even meeting with them, they have all kinds of data, all kinds of apps. Yeah, traffic and traffic traffic okay. studies. Um, you know, and to be fair, people, you know, the road crew needs to be able to do their job, but the public who pay the taxes, we need to listen to them as well. So it's, you know, how do you manage and how do you make that happen? And I can see students' yeah. project work being a bridge here yeah. between the two. I mean, and, and it, I mean, as we were talking here, I thought, so imagine you put a, a GoPro camera in the truck, right? Yeah. And just so people, like, this is what it's like to drive a truck this high up, <laughs> you can't see. You know, among other things, right. the students can say, yeah, so because this truck is this wide with the wing down and mm -hmm. uh, it's tilt, the road's tilted and all be, that. It stuff. would be great to have something like that that we could post on our website so people could, like, have a, almost like you're, almost like you're there kind of thing. I mean, I drove, <laughs> rode in a <laughs> truck. <laughs> I rode in one of the snowplow trucks and it wasn't even, it was after a storm, but it was amazing how high up you are. And how different it looks from the truck compared to even an SUV, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe something like that. You know, what I like about this project is it's well, it's not 251 towns, but maybe 240 that are like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll exclude the, the yeah. cities, and that's just Vermont. So, how many yeah. other places are like this? And you know, the students can even look at what's being done in Scandinavia or places mm -hmm. where. They have longer, even longer well, winters. Longer winters. So, <laughs> so we can pull some of that in, um, and and give you a report. I, we're going to need to make sure the scope doesn't just get blow up. Right. Well, we might take two. Now. We might have to have two years of your students' time. Well, if you're not the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going anywhere. And you have students who do who work do summer projects, not probably not volunteer like this, but who take summer jobs in Vermont working yep. in various municipalities solving engineering problems. So yeah, I mean, that's something to think about. Maybe, maybe somebody it. will want to see Callis in the summer. Right. Or during mud season. That's a whole that's different That's another whole bag. That's your own. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. We won't go there. No. No, yeah. you wouldn't want to. <laughs> no, we, yeah, we don't like people to come during mud season. Yeah. It's very uh it's not an inviting it's very educational. Yeah. It's not an inviting yeah. time of year. <laughs> they they did, never come back. I did that once. So VTran I don't know if you use the VTran mud season manual, but we wrote that about fifteen years ago. I didn't know there was so, a manual. So, yeah, so we, we um we studied four roads, uh, Weston, Windsor, the three. Weston, Windsor, I forget what the other town was. And then we came up with some, some basic solutions, put stone in, what we call burrito, wrap sand with a fabric. They put in uh, cement, we put in these expensive geowebs, and uh, came up with about a 15 page document I'll send you the link. Yeah. Just, uh, I didn't even know there was, was a such a manual. Tech, no. tech transfer manual. I mean, it's a little outdated now on prices, but the idea mm -hmm. is if you've got this regularly mud season problem. Mud season, problem area, mud season manual. Who knew? Uh, yep. So we did that for VTrans because 50, well, was it 2001? So 19 years ago? No. Oh, yeah. Um, Time flies. The state was saying, you know, cars are getting smaller and lower. Right. <laughs> and they've gotten smaller and lower. And I just came in with my smaller and lower car, mm -hmm. which I can't drive in the winter time here. But, you know, <laughs> well, or, or electric cars. So mm -hmm. you know, they're lower and heavier, and they're a different beast. Yeah. So was that, oh, excuse sorry. me, any of those solutions effective? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have document, documented what's working? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, there's some, some images there. Yeah. The relatively low cost ones actually work pretty well. So Matt, you were at a lot of the discussion about. I was at one of the meetings. One, yeah. one meeting, but you got the gist of it. I mean, is there anything we're missing? 
No, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, we, we talked about using either East Swamp Bear or Worcester, you know, you know, trying to adjust the routes, you know, cut down on the travel time mm -hmm. for it to get reloaded and that kind of thing. Um, you know, just looking at, uh, you know, the routes that we have now, is there could be variants and how to improve, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, doing the arteries and the, uh, you know, connecting roads and so yeah. forth. Okay. Brian, do you have anything else? Moment? No? No? We can talk later about the road standards. Okay. <laughs> Richard, did you have anything? I think this is what you were kind of here for, right? Just interested, thank you. Okay. Did you have any questions or comments? It just seems like it rains more in the winters than it used to. And uh, this past winter, road I live on, it was plowed up, and so it was just a canal that the water had no, you can worry about ditching all you want or anything like that, but the water and a <clears throat> winter rain had no place to go, but okay, you're on Apple, you're on Apple Hill. Is that are you, Apple on the, Hill. are you on the are you on the fourth class? Well, portion? Any, any part of it, but the, the class three part of it was the same. I mean, mm -hmm. the snow was piled up higher than the vehicles on the sides. So mm -hmm. There was no nothing they could do about that, and so when it rained, the water just stayed right in that canal. Mm -hmm. And then it froze. Yeah. Right, and then it froze, and then it turned to ice. Yeah. So it just seems to me like it's raining more and the students could think a little bit about, you know, if it does rain more in the winter, what 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 strategies might be out there for uh, dealing with that mm -hmm. in the future. But that's just, Especially my, in that's just my impression. Right. It yeah. could very well be that it's not raining more in the winter. I think no, it, you're yeah. correct. You're correct. Yeah. It's it definitely is. raining a lot more. Plus the fluctuation in temperature. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different battling a storm that is 20 degrees than it is battling a storm at 32 degrees. Right, it's where it's very sometimes much different. raining, sometimes it's traction, snowing. Traction, the type of snow. There's there's probably 20 different types of snow, or yeah. 50 different types of snow. And it's all different traction-wise. It's different how, mm -hmm. to, how to deal with it. And I agree, it's definitely a lot more rainy days mm -hmm. in the wintertime now than it used to be. And you, you can go a week with 20 below, and then all of a sudden in two days now it's it's 50 degrees or 40 degrees, and we've got water running because what's snow do when it warms up? It melts. No. Right. And so you, it's just that huge fluctuation in temperature that makes it mm -hmm. very difficult to battle any any of these storms. Yeah. You know, we might wake up in the morning and it's it's 10 degrees. In the afternoon, it's it's 30 degrees. There's mm -hmm. a huge difference right there, and vice versa. Sometimes it's you know 30 in the morning and it drops right off. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it drops off, the sand works differently on the roads. The 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 plowing is different. I mean everything is. There's just a huge fluctuation in temperature, and it just makes it very difficult to. First of all, plan for it. Plan for a storm. Put a put a, a you know a strategy together. Uh, because the weather changes so fast. Mixing the salt and the Mix, right. I mean, whatever whatever weapon you use against the storm is, is different per storm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's I gotta tell you, it's not easy. And you're, you're trying to save the tax people money by not going out and spread sand every every single storm. Mm -hmm. And we, we tried last year to do just hills and corners, and that's what I was, when this whole thing started, was it was just a heads up. I said, "Look, it's the middle of the winter. My sand pile's getting down. I just want to warn you, we're going to start doing just hills and corners." Mm -hmm. The people took that the wrong way. Yeah. I was just telling them, "Look, we're we're just going to do this to, to try to let them understand why we we're doing just hills and corners." They took it that we were out of sand. We right. weren't out of sand. We're not out of sand now. But I don't want to be out of sand. Because where are you going to find sand in, in January or March? Right, the pits You're are not closed. Gonna, it's all froze up. It's a, it's a brick. Right, and the pits are closed. And the pits are closed. So yeah, well, I was that's... trying to avoid running out of sand, but I wanted the tax people to know that, you know. It was, you know what it was? It was, it was the way that it was posted on front porch form because it didn't give an explanation. Right. That was right. part of the reason why that happened that way, and that's unfortunate from the person who posted it. So another issue then might be to look at the sand pile compared to how many roads we have. If you're looking at engineering type right. stuff, yeah. Alfred can tell you probably right off the top of his head how yeah. many yards yeah. of sand. Yeah. 
seven thousand to eight thousand parents per year. Compared to other towns with similar mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. um, that's so, a very discreet researchable. Right. That's very seems very researchable. I think last winter, you know, we had snowstorms where it snowed all day long. And, you know, you can't put sand down because an hour or two later, you're going to just plop it right off. It doesn't make sense to sand. Well, and then, on the other end, it would all just melt into the ice and then freeze over. And that happened, that happened. so many times yeah. last winter. And the other issue, and I'll, I'll just bring it up, I don't know whether it's anything you can put on your list, but last year, you know, we deal with the buses and the bus companies. And there was a little accident. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. It was just kind of some sliding. But what we discovered was that the buses don't have adequate tires for the back roads transportation of our kids. You know, they're not, they're like, they're like summer tires almost. They don't have studded tires, they're not snow tires. And the school contracts with these bus companies and we've asked to have the contract reopened to check on, this, on the tires. That's one of our big things that if this bus that had snow tires, we wouldn't have had the incident that we had up by the school. So I mean, across the state, I would think buses not having adequate tires, and then the town gets blamed. It's our fault that the bus yep. wasn't able to go or went off the road, and it's our fault when it's really probably a combination of if they should have safe tires, that should be a requirement. Mm -hmm. So yeah, whoever decides Right, so that must be a across, know what they the need state, to decide. across the state researchable yep. kind of thing. And you know, if it's safety for the kids and the traveling public, then they should have to be responsible for having the buses be equipped and outfitted as safely as possible. Yep. Good oh. tires cost money. Right, and they don't want to do that. Well, right, so we can we can tell you what's whatever we find to be best practices. Right. Well, that would help us with, is, the, yeah. with the school con right. the bus contracts. Be good for students now. Yeah, I mean that's what we discovered. Alfred had just barely sanded, and the bus went off. And then when they were looking at the tires, they weren't tires that should be on even on the road. Oh. Okay. Well. So Do you there's, you a, lot of, there's a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, and we can keep going, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't. Um, Is that anything else? Know? But I mean, may, we may pair a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to. Just to be, yeah. to, to focus yeah, on what's going on. Something. But, uh, is there any Maybe you got two sets of students that want to do this. It's possible, although I'm, it's not. It's not one of the bigger groups that I've had in the years, so mm -hmm. I may not. But uh, if if I do, then I'm not going to turn them away. Yeah, and just tell them how much they're helping their rural communities who are strapped for resources and looking for help. Yeah, and some they're are very, very, very much appreciated. Shirt. Very much appreciated. I don't know if I have any. I have some, I don't know if I have any students from around here, like Barry. A couple of years ago, I had a student from Bakersfield who drove in every day Ooh. in Burlington. <laughs> Ooh, that's a long drive. Yeah, so, so right. that student knew. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, oh, so the other thing is. Do what, I still have to fill out these forms? There are a little, there's a little bit of form work there. Okay. So, that, so what I have is a letter of understanding. Mm -hmm. So we understand each other. So our students are going to give you this their time and, and a report and some recommendations mm -hmm. I want them to communicate with you on a regular basis so you know what's going on and then you can tell them whether, whether they're giving you what you're looking for or not mm -hmm. and looking for in two ways one is once a month could we have some sort of a phone call maybe they could come once or twice to a meeting or mm -hmm. during the day to tell you what they have as they've gotten a little bit more done but just to check in. So they'll have given you something maybe three or four days ahead. This is once mm -hmm. a month, and then there's a phone call. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a Skype. Well, I don't know. You don't have, you don't have cell yeah, service sure. yet. Or yeah. I mean, you don't have uh, internet, do you? <laughs> well, you do have. We have internet. Yeah. DSL or yeah, 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 cable? Or? No, we have, um, I think there's, part, you have cable at your house. I have cable at our house. But it's okay. Skype would be difficult. OK, yeah. well, we can, well, so that's great. Right, you know, OK, right. so we'll figure something out. Right. And just to, to check in. So there's a little, a little conversation. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's helpful. That, that helps everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have three reports. We'll have a data report. So they've gathered information. Would you look through it and say, mm -hmm. you know, OK, that you've got it right, or you missed something, even though I gave it to you, or something like that. Right. A preliminary design report. So that design might be a concept of what this 
traveling sales salesman saleswoman salesperson salesperson is uh, and then a final report at the end and mm -hmm. just to give them a good review so I can do that faculty can do that mm -hmm. it's not the same really as you as clients and I'm not asking you to check spelling or or grade them mm -hmm. but just to say yeah this is this is what I was looking for or I don't understand this yeah tell me in a better way right and some so, of it's gonna be maybe the select board looking at it some of it's gonna be alpha looking at it and depending on what it is we can refer it to the right person. That's fine. You know, if you just take that document and mark it up in mm -hmm. red, it's fine. I think that's where, on the front end, it's really important that the, the student team be clear about what in that whole list of possibilities is really grabbing them and feels like a complete project. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that we know, okay, this is what they're working on. Or if they're working on this, the best mentor is somebody you know working with the board, or, or maybe Toby, who's not even here. Um, okay. But so we so knowing what scope of what they're choosing to work on is going to help us understand how to move forward, guide them. And yeah. that's fine. And that's yeah. that'll probably be one of the first conversations where they'll send you mm -hmm. what they they propose they to think. do. And you say, "Yep, I got it." Or uh, no, this is like, we don't really need this. Or right. let's 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 do a little less of this and a little more of that. So, do you have enough notes here tonight that we don't need to make another whole list? I think I do. Um, and we'll have it in our minutes. Katie does an excellent job taking our minutes, so we can send you those. That would. Yep, help minutes, uh, and I'll let them have that. If there's any photos, you can give me. You can email me or give them to Mac or something. Just. I, 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 photos help when I explain the project. Mm -hmm. I can I show them can, the map of Calus. Okay. Do we I have think, photos? We can come up with photos. Toby's probably got some. Something, you know, a snowy yeah. road yeah. or something. I mean, I can CVRP, find a snowy road somewhere. CVRPC has a ton of photos. Okay, all right. And, and with our town website, calusvermont.gov, all some. spelled out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I need the snow and the truck. <laughs> okay. We do have a picture like that somewhere. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah the snow plow and the snow. There's a flying. picture somewhere where we used to have a truck with two wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's floating around somewhere. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. where. But yeah. You'll probably never see that kind of truck again mm -hmm. in Callis. <laughs> right. Just because of the nature of it. Yeah. Two wings. And I'll get you that map. I know exactly. I think I know exactly where it's it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we'll we'll try to find some pictures and ask Toby about some pictures. Yeah, I don't need much, but a few. It just well, he's a retired AP photographer. Okay. He's got oh, pictures. Yeah. Okay. And we need an existing <laughs> road. You know, now? Oh, yeah. And just a little bit of something mm -hmm. that is like no, said, no, 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 scary. We would be happy to host them to come to okay. Callis, fix some lunch. I do want them to come you know, sometimes. Come and so spend some time out. at the road, town garage. I think that'd be really, really important. Mm -hmm. Whether they ride all 73 miles or was it 8, 73 or 84? 73. 73. Yeah. Or some percentage. So, yeah, they've got to be on these roads. But let them come to the town garage and see all the equipment and you know what goes into maintenance and you know it, it gives you a better picture to go to the town garage. Yeah. And we should do that soon because you're going to get busy with. Well, hopefully it doesn't snow right away, but yeah, right. Hopefully um, not. Well, usually around the 10th of October, I start putting the plows on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to, you know, I, I guess that's what they're going to want to see. Is they're going to want to see a truck with the plows and right. get the whole picture. Because you could even ride around in a truck with the plows on, even if it's not selling, yeah, so they can get the they can get the, the, the sense, get a sense of yeah. what it's yeah. what it's about, and. Um, yeah. Is this is this you said twelve weeks? Is it a fall semester or or fall and spring? Okay, so it's yeah. the whole yeah. academic. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. This uh, is a great idea. Thank you so much, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Should be yeah. interesting. Yes. Yeah. 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 By the time they start, it's a couple weeks into the fourteen week for first semester, oh, and sure. it's fifteen weeks. But we, we don't want them finishing up at the last day, so it's probably 12 and 12, mm -hmm. so 24. So, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, that's a good amount of time. Yeah, it's a, it, I mean, it, they're gonna get essentially all just about all the seasons, they won't get summer, but that's not the important one anyway, right? <laughs>
All right. That invasives and there are some overlapping disciplines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. well, I'll contact information. I think. Oh, it's definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, so oh, I have, have some cards. I have some cards. cards. So I don't. I don't. I don't. I have more than like, cards. Well, card. You have cards in, you, in there. Give card, Alfred. I'll give you a card. Okay. Sure. Does anybody need? Where's your I've got you. I need probably my, my contact phone. info. Or, yeah, take oh. it, Katie. Okay. You okay. need it. <laughs> and you have my contact information, right, John? Yes. Yep. I'm all um, set. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure to have you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your cake. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I it's my dessert. You can eat it before you, before you don't feel like you got to rush out here. Now, so, when you came, did you come just, you took the county road I and then up, just I came up 14. Oh. Is that the long way? So I'm yeah, gonna, I, I live in Randolph Center, so am I better off going down to 14? Oh. I think the most direct route, and maybe you'll say it too, is Kent Hill Road at the top, take a left. That's the county road, and it turns into Main Street and Montpelier. Thanks, Brian. And you just so want to get to Montpelier. Montpelier turning into your county road here? Yeah, well, okay. the, county, the main street in Montpelier yeah, yeah. turns into the, the county, county road, road. Okay. so it's just one straight. Okay. That is the way I thought might be Oops. shorter, but I said, I don't know if that's the best. Yeah. So. Okay. I would Thank go you. 14. So, so you can 14 to the interstate? I would go out Pekin Brook to 14, 14 back to Montpelier on 14. Let it, oh, that's but, but that's the thing, the that really, what well, all I'm yeah. saying is, there's any number of ways. They're all yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll get there. Well, I'll probably go, let's see if I go, I'll go through Barry and kind of have that. Yeah. So I'll probably go take 14. Yeah. And I'll, yeah, I'll so take the county road and, and see what that's like. See, the, see what our three miles of pavement feel yeah. like. <laughs> that's so if you notice the change, you get these small pictures. If I notice it in the summer, I get to That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So I, I guess I'll tell you a little story I heard this morning. Um, I listened. I started to listen to these podcasts called "99 Percent Invisible." Huh. Uh, my sister-in-law turned me on to them. They're pretty interesting. Um, this one was, "What is the biggest design flaw ever?" The line. No, actually, the biggest design flaw ever is that. Uh, designs do not include all gen do not include women. Huh. So, and, so that's a per just a pervasive. Yeah, design and it just so designers started out to be guys, and they just mm -hmm. so so the, the short story was somewhere in, in Sweden, people were complaining about the roads and how how no how would they be most efficient in in, in plowing the roads. And they said, well, we'll do the arteries first. This is a city. We'll do the arteries first. And uh, of course, uh, that would make sense. Then they started to think about who was using what. And they, they realized that for their health care system, they were getting a lot of injuries from women who were not driving, but they were taking their kids out on strollers and things like that with three inches of snow. And they said, it's a lot harder to push a stroller in three inches of snow than it is to drive a car in three inches of snow. Mm -hmm. So they completely turned around the way they plowed. They said, we're not going to plow the arteries first. We're going to plow the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they, different country, different right, yeah, scenario. Yeah, we're we're going to plow, but they, they, they said, we'll plow the sidewalks first, and uh, then we'll do the, the main roads because you can get on a main road, through on a main road more easily than you, you can walk. So people were slipping, tripping, falling on sidewalks that were icy and snowy. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe the you know the comparison here is maybe we need you know the, the community needs to decide well what is it that you want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. People really are there are that many more people that are leaving at the middle of the night to go to work or at five in the morning or coming in late. Maybe what used to be done 10 years ago doesn't work anymore. And so you need to do something different. Maybe you need to plow 24 seven, which means you got to figure out how to pay for that. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then you got to have enough trucks and if the truck breaks down, you know, there's all these variables. 
But I thought it was an interesting yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Coming yeah. here tonight. Yeah. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. And that's public health data coming in. Yes. To inform right design. Yeah. Yeah. So starting to think of things as a system. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. As opposed right. to it's just one thing. Yep. So we'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Pleasure meeting you yeah, all. Thank, yes. you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We talked about that in the context of getting a speed study, and, and was it you, Denise, who said the speed studies? Um, measure the speed of the cars, and if 80% of the cars are going at X speed, right. then the conclusion is that's the right speed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, oh, right. and yeah. so what that, and so absolutely zero information about the environment, um, pedestrian traffic, bicycles on mm -hmm. our roads, you know, we're, there's a lot of bicycles on our back. Yeah, right. And we have a lot of people ride bicycles and walk, so that's another factor. Right, right. So anyway, just the the narrowness of the of the thinking um, and drawing important conclusions without looking the big at picture. All the pictures. Yeah, yeah. right now we're also working on looking at traffic in our East Callis, which is the only part of town we has you know state eight highway. <laughs> So, you know, we're looking at what can we do to get people to drive a little more slowly through there. So we're looking at maybe getting some of those solar powered. Oh, science? Science. <coughs> so that's another whole, it's another whole I know. project. There's no limit to how many projects, mm -hmm. which is okay. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Thank you. It is good. I didn't make it. Oh. Did you make it? Yeah, I made it. Oh, thank Delicious. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, any more? Any more questions? No? All right, well, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. I'll just finish this. And yeah, that's yeah. fine. Thank you. Um, I think there's, you want a bottle of water? Oh, I have water in the car. Oh, no. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I got milk in there. <laughs> I have milk in there. To take oh, home. to go with your cake? No, to take home. <laughs> oh. oh. I don't want to forget my milk. I'm, I better write it down. Milk. I was going to forget. Right. Okay. So that was very helpful. And we look forward to. Yeah, really you interesting. Guys. Yeah, very interesting. Who knew that there was anything like this even out there? Um, all right. Next on the agenda the traffic ordinance. Um, Toby got back to us. Mm -hmm. He's looked at that. And another, since mm -hmm. we decided based on the sheriff's input, that it would be better to put a stop sign at the intersection of Pekin, and, and that's what we were gonna do in the first place, and then we had the public who said, well, we don't need a stop sign, but the sheriff said, if you wanna really be able to enforce anything, you have to have a stop sign, which makes perfect sense. So, um, and your students might wanna look at that traffic ordinance too, because it shows, it gives the names of all the different roads nothing else. Do you have any uh, traffic intersection issues? Mm -hmm. Not not huge though. Not, 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 not that we, that we'd rather do this. Yeah, the no, 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 is no we're not filing right. up complaints on that yeah. at all. But it was also it was also suggested and I agree that it would be good to have a stop sign at the intersection of Duger Brook. And I don't know, is that Pekin or is so. that North Calis yeah, right right by Grant Fair's house? You can just leave it, John. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just we'll recycle it. Yeah. We have recycled. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Happy night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Thanks, Mac. Thank, thank you very much. much. You're welcome. No, it's right. thank you. It's very good. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mac. If you have any questions? You have my email. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it very much. You're welcome. Um, it was suggested maybe a stop sign at that intersection of Cooper Brook and North Calais. This is. Kent Hill and Pekin, up here, right? Yes. Why does the road have two different names? It doesn't. It does? It does. Oh, it switches. You're right. It switches. North Dallas starts right here at this intersection. Mm -hmm. Going north, yes. or going towards North Dallas. Mm -hmm. right. And then Brook. the other way, it's Pekin Brook. Right. It doesn't have different. Pekin Brook is called Pekin Brook, and North Dallas is called North Dallas. <laughs> 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 Same road, though. Just change, it just changes right here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. That's what it's like. Really? <laughs> you need a line in the middle. Right. You need a yellow line. Denise, you're changing roads now. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But it was suggested that maybe we want to put a stop sign at that intersection. And I have had, I have more, I've had more close encounters with this one right here than I have at the Duga Brook one. <laughs> but as long as we're not looking at updating the traffic ordinance, do we want to put it? This is the one we were talking about, right? Right. But somebody, who was it, just sent me a, I can't remember who it was. It just suggested it. And I was like, oh yeah, it would make perfect sense to do it now instead of redoing the ordinance next So in next terms year. of process, we didn't, we haven't done anything with process as far as right. adopting it. Traffic ordinance. So it was on the agenda. Right. It's been on the agenda several times, and I thought we were at a point tonight where we would. The process is, is we adopt it, and then people have 45 days to comment or to oppose it or oppose it or yeah. right, um, and then we could change it or not. But it, it, the process, in my mind, it works backwards. Mm -hmm. But it, that's it is what it is. So can we? I put a note in. Can we make these? Yes, we can. Changes tonight, and and then approve it tonight, and yes. then we wait 45 days. I would rather we make the changes tonight, agree to it, and have it show up in the minutes, and, have, have, and then adopt it at our next. So meeting. tonight we do like a straw adoption, and then we right. formally adopt it. In a week. Because I want to be able to put on the agenda adoption of revised traffic ordinance and the date, so people can show up right. and complain, and we can explain. Right. But we added, if you go wherever the, I think it's towards the end, Katie, where the stop sign stuff is. Let's yeah. drive in. Oh, let's drive it. Okay, stop that. So, was it that most? Katie's looked at this, Alfred's looked at this, Toby's looked at this. Here, is this it? Okay, yeah. Um, I thought I put a note. Well, I might be in the wrong version of the document. Yeah, there was no, two no, more. This is it. Is this it? This is the most recent. If you open it with Google Docs, would it show my comments then? This is Google Docs. And I think that just said stop sign at Haggett Road and Center Road. Um, that can't be right. Be careful. Not for the speed demon. Oh. There's with the notes. So. Yeah, this is all Toby's notes. Well, that's all Toby's notes. Okay, right. Toby, Toby. I'm sure I made a note. But you know what, Denise? If you don't actually click comment, I do click comment. No, you might. This is what I've learned the hard way. You say you want to make a comment. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't say, after in the little box you typed your comment, then you have to say comment. And otherwise it disappears. Okay, so the only comment I put in was to change the, um, to add the stop sign at Pekin, or is that North Callis? Pekin and Kent Hill. Uh, Pekin and North, Pekin and Kent Hill. Pekin and Kent Hill stop yes. sign and a stop sign at Duger Brook and North Callis. Right. There. That's the yeah. first that I've heard about that one being a change, but. Somebody asked for it. Somebody yeah. asked. Yeah. And, 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 and I go that way frequently, and it, it would make sense to have a stop sign. There's nothing there. There's not even a yield sign. There's nothing there, right? I don't have it's a problem. It's an office T, but you got to so be careful about if you do it in one place, you need to do it. I mean, we have a lot of intersection that has nothing. That's, but this is a main artery. I appreciate what you're saying, I, and I and I agree. But this is this road's a, one of the main arteries in the town. This road gets a lot of traffic. It was news to me that it's a thing that okay. you don't actually have to have a stop sign at the end. I just figured we had a stop sign theft problem. <laughs> you know? oh, right. Like oh, Lightning Ridge. Uh, well, that one is yeah. right, but well, so we try to look at the ordinance, and if the ordinance calls for a sign, then we try to get them right. right. But there's places in East Montpelier, so it's not even near there. Where I, I, because it's my neighborhood, I know there used to be a stop sign there, and then there's not. And I just think, oh, whatever, somebody stole a stop sign, and the guys are busy, and we don't have anyone yet. But now I realize, oh, there's lots of places. It just never occurred to me. Yeah, but. Also, I think part of why it doesn't occur to me is, to me, 
<laughs> it doesn't change my behavior. They come to the end of the road and they stop. A lot of people do automatically. I mean, I usually slow way down or stop when I'm coming off of Kent Hill. But a lot of people don't because I've almost gotten plowed into. So, yeah, so I don't have any problem with putting a stop sign in place. You know, err on the side of putting one up, my goodness. Yeah, it's better to be safe. And then, as, as the sheriff said, you know, Bill Davis wanted us not to put stop sign up to put a yield sign up. Well, I could go either way. But the sheriff said, stop. Right. Right, it makes perfect sense. So we just need to add that, oh, here we are, Kent Hill Road, entering Pekin Brook Road, and, oh, and North Callis. And then the idea is to, we've got to identify the name, the number of Duba Brook and North Callis Road. Okay. Where, or but that's under the yield where? intersections. That's yield, so we want to so move this, we want to move. Well, actually, you actually just want to remove the strike through. Right, right. And then, the strike and then through under the yield. And then right. that second bullet one, Haggett Road and Center Road, and during Adamant Road, there's not, that's not a stop sign. <coughs> it's not? No. Oh, gosh. That's right. that whole thing that we talked about. There's no southern southern that's southern. like a no way. Yeah. Do we want, I guess, I like, will want through if you try that. No. Say what? You'll start World War III. Mm -hmm. That would be like putting a stop sign out here so you know you're switching from Peak and Brook to North. Mm -hmm. Okay, so North then we want to Cal straighten Cal. that out then. Yeah, it shouldn't be there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the, the one second one. blue one. All right. So wait a minute, one thing at a time. So let Cliff's driving? No. Katie's driving. Typing, yeah. I'm displaying Katie's typing. Okay, so we want to unhighlight the first one, Kent Hill Road. Peak and Brook. We want to unhighlight that. Okay. We want a stop sign there. We want to strike through the second one, which is Haggard Road, Center Road. Hold on, let me have a strike. I think to these where you want the first one is it's not, it, the highlighting, I don't know what it means. Well, you I don't want, either. You want to unstrike it. He was drawing it. our I attention. Oh, I did it. It's just taking a moment. So now I can't show Katie worrying about the blue. And what we're worried about no, is it's getting a strike. I, yeah, I did it. I think our computers are just taking a moment to speak to each other. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up there quite yet. So the first one, I, I think the blue, he just was bringing our attention to where he made yeah. changes. So, so never mind the blue, just the strike yes. I removed the strike through the first one and I added a strike through to the second one. Bingo. Okay. Perfect. And then the one below where, where uh, we had... Uh, Kent Hill the and Drake. State Highway no North, to North. Oh, I see. Go to the Yields. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Right, so eventually all the highlights are going to come out. The okay. strikeouts or pieces are going to be just deleted. I think we were just doing it so we'd know. And what our then are. in section two on the yield intersections, Katie. Yes. That's the one to strike out. The whole thing. Okay. You're right where you are now. Yep. Yeah, perfect. And then we want to go back up to the stop sign section and put a stop sign at the intersection of Duger Brook and North Callis Road. And is that a new item? Yes. Where do you want it located? I don't know. Oh, that's in that stop, stop sign, sign list. Yeah. Anywhere in there? Just looks like there. Looks like their numeric order. Number one, number one. Number do you two, know what number five. road Duger Brook is? Number well, it's right there. Town 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 so maybe it goes right after that one. Yeah. So so that means there already is a stop sign at that end of Duga Brook Road, where right? It's the county, county road. road. Yeah. yeah. See that last one on page yeah. eight? Yeah. Yeah, there is one because I can see it all the time. So now there's going to be a stop sign at both ends. Right, which makes sense. Right. And then sure. That's, um, that's what you guys decide. Yeah. And what is in Town Highway? I see above it. One says, North Callis Road. See up here. A couple lines above yeah. is, is that correct? Yes. I think? Okay. Huh. North Callis Road. It's is it Alfred? Is it SA one North Callis or TH one? TH one North Callis. That's what should be. TH. Because where it's because up because mm -hmm. up there where it says State Eight Highway. Where? But it should say Town Highway one, not SA one on the. We get state aid on all of them. Can you, can you tell me where it's wrong? Oh my goodness. Right, right here. Uh -huh. Instead of saying SA, it's to say TH. But okay. Peak and Brook is state aid? Yes. Maybe the that's why they're changed names, right? 
The whole the North Dallas Road is in the state. The roads are not all state roads. He gave me a list. In some yeah. roads, it's only in one place where it's paved and not. It's class two roads of state aid. Oh. It's only the class two roads. And it's weird. You can't tell by driving on it. No. It's confusing. Mm -hmm. I spent way too much time on that. We don't get state aid for all of them, the class three roads. No. Okay, so are we good? We need a motion or we're just going to put it out there like that? Okay, so I think that. Barring any more changes, next meeting I want to put on the agenda, adopt the revised road standards and we should have the working copy and a clean copy. And we're not going to make a motion on these particular changes. We can tonight and then adopt the whole thing next meeting. Well, we made a motion be before. Yeah, might be better to make a motion. And then it's really clear what we're making. It's like shouting it from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to make a motion? I make the motion that we put a stop sign where Kent Hill Road meets Pekinbrook and uh, North Palace Road, uh, and that we put a stop sign where Duggarbrook Road enters North Palace Road. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Even clear. No, the stop sign is clear. The bottom of Kent Hill Road. Does that make sense, Alfred? It's not on Peak and Brook, and it's not on Yeah, I mean, the only thing I might add is maybe there are other intersections that we want to. Where it needs. Well, not for, it. right, but not for, not for now, unless we hear. Right. I think if we move forward and we adopt the always, ordinance, then. We can always readopt it if we need to make right. changes. People might come forward yeah. to paper and online. <coughs> all right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, and then next meeting we'll put it on, and that'll start the 45 day clock ticking. But in that 45 days, Alfie, if there are roads that you think we should consider putting a stop sign at, that's your opportunity to bring it in. Right, and you can do that. Well, hang on. Okay. Actually, one thing I would say though is every time we, we tinker, we reset the 45 day clock. Right. So. Right, that's what I was saying. <coughs> maybe we should blow up and get do some more research as far as if there are other other intersections that need a stop sign or, I think or a yield sign. I think we should do that, absolutely, after 45 days is told. Yeah, after the 45 days. Right. Adopt the ordinance, get Then you're, then you're another 45 days to make new more, changes. To make right? new changes, but we want to get, we want to move forward. We want to get this on the books. Yeah. Or can he tell us? Right now. Between now and our next meeting when we adopt that. Do you know, Alfred, is there one, is there one, is there one in mind of? There isn't, no. Okay, okay. Is, but we're, we're, you had one phone call came in about Duga Brook in North Callis Road, and now we're changing it. Oh, so who's yeah, to say I mean, tomorrow we don't get five more phone calls well, saying we could. about other intersections? That's all I'm saying. Uh, we could, we could. That could very well happen. But I've heard, I've heard this Duga Brook North Callis Road issue before. I just didn't think of it again until I got this reminder. So it, it could very well happen. You're right. And then we'll just deal with it from there. But we just need to get this done and on the books. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> he always has I such am. a good time. I am. Yes, I am. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I know you wouldn't. Did you get cake? I did have some cake. You want another piece? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's almost bedtime. <laughs> okay. It has all that nutrition in it, you know? Right, right. All right. Petition. Yeah. 1927. I don't know why I put a three. Why did I put a three there? That's wrong. Take the three off. It's 1927. I don't know why I said three. Okay. Um, on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I reported back to, I got an email response, I think I CC'd you guys on all that, yeah. um, and explained that Alfred was management. So it's just um, the other three road crew members. So they got that answer. And we are supposed to, and I don't think there's really anything for us, much more for us to do. We're not opposing it. We believe in unions. Um, so I think, I don't think there's anything more for us to do that I can tell. And the person was okay with your 
explaining the deadlines like they wanted this by such and such a date, yeah. but we don't even meet until right. You change the deadlines okay. for the giving of information. Okay. Um, and we're not opposing it for any reason. So well, we haven't decided to not oppose it, but we're kind of we're saying it, and I don't. I agree. We have yeah, I don't know that we need to. I don't know if we do. We need to vote on this, or at least I think we want to reflect in the minutes that the select board does not oppose this petition and that we support unions. I don't think we should say, I was going to keep silent. I don't think we need to say that. I think we should be, it's fine to say we. We receive the petition, we understand, and, and we are going to move forward. And we don't oppose it. We don't oppose it. Right, but we don't need to make political statements. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then, and I agree with all of that. What, what is the process? When do we start bargaining? I don't know, that's what, I think that's the next question, is what happens after the, I didn't bring the extension of the dates, but one of the dates I think was um, 31st or the 30th. I'd have to go back and look at Tim Noonan and this LeBombard person, Timothy LeBombard's email. I don't think there's anything, I think then the next thing is for them to let us know what happens now. I think that's a question that we could ask them if you want me. I can ask them. Okay, so now what? They know how to reach you. Right. Mm -hmm. the, employ the employer can agree that the bargaining unit proposed by the union is appropriate. It can voluntarily recognize the union as exclusive bargaining representation, representative, that's option one. The employer can agree to a consent election. A consent election does not apply right recognition of the union for collective bargaining purpose. It does, however, require agreement that the proposed bargaining unit is appropriate. If the employer agrees to a consent election, please notify the Labor Relations Board and we will work with you and to, to arrange a date and time place for the election. That's two. If a question of unit determination or representation exists, please file an answer to the petition indicating the specific question of unit determination or representation. We've already sort of done that because I told them Alfred was management and then there's the three road group. Has Tim LeBaum already acknowledged that point? Mm -hmm. He did. Well, I sent you guys the email. Tim there. Noonan did. Right, but Timothy LeBombard responded. Okay, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he was fine. He 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 didn't question it further that okay. I could tell, okay. unless I missed something. Okay, I'll look for that. Yeah. So the employer can agree that the bargaining proposed by the union is appropriate, um, provided the union demonstrates the support of the employees it seeks to represent. No rival employee organization seeks to represent, and the proposed bargaining unit is appropriate under the standards set forth. If the employer chooses this option, please notify the, this board that there's, these standards have been met and a certification of recognition will be issued. So, I mean, none of us have ever, well, I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. So, I, would, I guess we are saying, number one, we don't, um, I don't know that we need a consent election. There's only three people. What are they consenting to elect? Uh, to choose the union to represent them, I believe. Well, wasn't that the cards? The election was the cards that they... The that they already signed. did. Yeah. I think that's expressing interest. Yeah, I don't think that's the same thing. That's I, meaning we wouldn't like to sign up for this union. And then and then we get to say... I honestly don't know. I yeah, no, I know. We're looking at you like you know. You right, are. right. I don't, I don't have a clue about it. I, I, I don't I don't have an opinion if we I don't is it the employer can agree to a consent election I think this document is in the folder right yeah I think we should look at it to bring it out mm -hmm. I think I gave it to Katie I thought I did I, I don't think I put anything like that in. a consent election does not imply recognition of the unit for collective bargaining purposes so. it does however require agreement if the proposed bargaining unit is appropriate. Is it's appropriate? Damn. I don't know what that means. I, I feel like I want to say, I guess it's appropriate. 
we have three road crew guys, it's reasonable for them to say they want to be mm -hmm. a bargaining unit. Is that what we're saying when we say appropriate? If the employer agrees to a consent election, please notify the Labor Relations Board and we will work with you or your designee and Timothy LeBonbar to arrange a date, time, and place for the election. Well, isn't this, I don't, they, the road crew needs to do this? We're not, why are we doing this? They need to consent. So, they want to do it. I think what they're saying is a consent election, I don't know if it means we're consenting. I mean, we're not, we're not disputing it. We're not saying we want to challenge this. So the, it seems to me the easiest way to do this, if we're not opposed to it, is to go with option one. The bargaining unit proposed by the union is appropriate and can voluntarily recognize the union as exclusive bargaining representation. Representative of the employees, the employees petition for provide the union demonstrates the support of the employees it seeks to represent, which they have. It does. Which yep. They have. The cards that There's no that rival happen. employee organization seeking to represent the employees. There's none that we know of. Right. And the proposed bargaining unit is appropriate under the standards set forth in 21 VSA 1724C. That's what we don't know. I mean, I don't think there's, I don't think that they would be doing this if it wasn't correct. Timothy Noonan, who is the executive director of the Labor Relations Group. Right, right. So that's my only question is what are the standards? Um, can we, do we have, um, I didn't here? bring my laptop, but we can go to the, VS, the yeah, VSA online. We can go to the statutes. Okay. Yeah, Please. just go to the legislative, Vermont.gov. And then you'll pick um, Lakota government. And then we want to go to the legislature. What are you looking at? And then we're looking the for here. And then scroll, scroll, and then at the Look top, at the top, you can just the Vermont laws. Two different sets of just type here. in this 21 VSA. Uh, that's going to get you bills, mm -hmm. though. You need to go to Vermont Laws, that tab where the clicker is. Yeah, go there. The other one's going to take you. And then go to Statutes Search. Oh. Statutes Online, either way. Uh, and scroll down. Okay. Um, Try entering just the, oh good, there's the titles. Go to what? 24. 24. Yeah, go to 24. Two four parentheses little c parentheses of interests, needs, and general conditions of employment of all employees within the proposed bargaining unit. Mm -hmm. The board may, in its discretion, require the separate vote be taken among any particular... When they're talking board. about board, they're talking about labor relations board, correct? I believe that's correct. It would, it would be silly that they're talking about us. Let's, I'm just reading out loud for the camera. The board may, in its discretion, require the separate vote be taken among any particular class or type of employee 
within a proposed unit to determine specifically if the class or type wishes to be included. Require the separate vote be taken among any class or type. And, and then the final sentence, no bargaining unit shall include both professional employees and other municipal employees unless the majority of such professional employees vote to be included in the unit. And so that tells me that it's appropriate that it's the three road crew, they're all the same right. type of employee. Right, so C1 standard is met. C2, right, all, all of the C standards are listed in the letter Denise. It just says C, right? Yeah, just C. Uh, okay, so C2 is whether over fragmentation of units will result from certification to a degree which is likely to produce an adverse effect on the effective representation of other employees of the municipal employer or upon the effective operation of the municipal employer. And so the question is whether this is going to have a new unit among the road crew, a bargaining unit, will over fragment our... But since we've agreed that they're all in the same unit... Well, and does it create over fragmentation of the town as a whole, other employees of the municipal employer? Does it have an adverse effect on the effective representation of other employees of an employer or, from the, or the effective operation of it? I would say no. 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 Number three, in determining whether a unit is appropriate, the extent to which the employees have organized is not controlling. So that's just information. Yeah, that's. So, so the question was, which one of those do we pick? One, two, or three? Right. So. The employer can agree that the bargaining unit proposed by the union is appropriate and can voluntarily recognize, provided the union, the union demonstrates the support of the employees it seeks to represent. Done. Yep. No rival employee organization seeks to represent the employees. We know of none. And the proposed bargaining unit is, unit is appropriate under the standards we've just read. Yep. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for being thorough. We are very thorough. Well, you don't want to go home and read this and no. realize that yeah. we weren't. All right. So, um, do you guys agree? Yeah. 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 I don't think there's anything more for us to do to say we agree with number one. And and then in the communication, I would I would if you don't mind me making a suggestion, Denise, I would say that we I would just repeat what they said. Our yes. decision is based on boom. Can you send me the link to that? Thank you. Let them know that we reviewed that. Yes. And 1724? I would just be, be very fat faced. With a little so save. Read your yep. letter and yep. boom, boom, boom. Yep. This yep. link will be the whole thing. What do you have to say? Really fat faced. No. Right. right. We don't have fingers. And anybody else want that link? No. If we have the letter, I want the letter. It's got it in there. Yeah. I didn't see the letter and went to Denise for it. I just saw the, the discussion. I don't think I got that either. But there was no attachment in it. I forwarded to everybody the email. All your stuff is sitting in some little outbox somewhere. I'll check again. I'll send it. If I yeah. didn't, I'm sorry. I'll send it again. But I thought I did because we talked about it last mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I, I found this discussion thread. Mm -hmm. But going through it, I find no attachments. There should be a link. Anyways. It may be, maybe because you blind copied this or whatever, it doesn't come in. Oh, maybe. If you reply and don't forward, things happen. And sometimes Gmail does weird things, I found out. That's true. Because Katie, I'll swear I sent something to Katie, and I'll, she'll be like, That's I didn't get the attachment. It's like, <laughs> All right, well, I'll send it around again. It's not, it's still. It's not a constant and also, or anything, so. also that the bargaining unit is three people. Right. Yeah, I would yeah. repeat that. Yeah, he acknowledged that before, so I'll just make sure we say it again. All right, I think that part's done. Okay. Good. Good to go. Okay. Um, next up. And then after we're done with um, some of this other stuff, I want to go into executive session. And that's when we would ask everybody to leave. You are dismissed. Would you like to? If you stop by the, here tomorrow, I'm betting the ladies in the office will give you the rest of this cake to oh. take to the road trip. Okay. I'll make it. Make a trip. Sure do that. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Well, Appreciate your help. Yeah.
I can, well, I can save a few pieces for the ladies here and you can just take yeah, it tonight. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll, I'll be here tomorrow. Um, okay. Okay, good night. Good night. Thanks, um, All right, so scheduling, this is a meeting with CBRPC, RCT, and I don't know whether I got it right, and it's GMTA regarding a commuter bus on Route 14. They want to come on the 19th. The 9th? The 9th, I'm sorry, you're right, the 9th. And then um, that same night will be the road erosion, I think the road erosion inventory update. I went to a meeting with Pam DeAndrea and Dan Courier. Larry Bush was there. Toby showed up about halfway through. And we just looked at the draft report and made some suggestions, and I asked them to present it to the whole board. So that'll be, I think that'll be on the 9th as well. That's fine. That's a regular meeting. That's a regular meeting. Yep. 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 Trying not love to that. Love that. Trying not to have it so there's extra meetings. Um, I still have to work on this scheduling this meeting with other towns. We need to have a BCA meeting on the 9th at 6.15. I don't know what people's schedules are like. Yeah, I right emailed now. Judy today and I said, you know, is that a work is schedule? That a work? Is that a yeah, it's a work. Okay. Yeah. So I won't be able to be at 6.15. At 6:15, we need to do a BCA meeting I think because so. we need to review yeah, eventually checklist I'm, and stuff because of the upcoming elections. Eventually, I'm not going to be available at six again, but I am right now. Okay, so Rose is a no. Are you available? Yeah. Sharon, yes. Katie, are you available? Yep. Yeah, I'll add it to the calendar too. Okay, thank you. And what's the BCA about? I'm sorry. The Board of Civil Authority. It's about we have to look at the checklist and stuff because we have elections coming up. Um, when is it? November? What is it? The first Tuesday or something in November? Is that the primaries? November 5th. November 5th. Yeah. Two days after daylight savings time. Oh, I hate when we change time. Oh, yes. Although it's already getting dark so much earlier now. The stars are beautiful, though. They are. They were really been spectacular. True, but it just like we know what's coming. I know, you know, just like we know snow and winter roads are coming. Yeah. All right, um, Cliff, do you have any update for us on IT stuff, RFPs? No, other than to say, you know, I notified um, all of the people, all of the potential vendors mm -hmm. who provided proposals that we were still working through the process and that we would not have any meetings in the month of August and possibly look at scheduling meetings if necessary sometime in this September dates to be determined. Um, everyone's understanding there's still strong interest in um, being our provider of choice. Um, and so there's no meeting on our books? Uh, no Anything meetings. I have I can erase? No meetings are scheduled. Yeah, exactly. okay. Um, but I, yeah, I think we should uh, probably at our next meeting uh, with the board identify, unless we can do it now, identify dates where we would potentially want to schedule meetings mm -hmm. and, and identify dates for potential evening meetings and identify dates for potential day meetings. Do you think we're going to need day ones? Do you, or do you think if, um, they really want our, if they really want our business, they'll show up in the evening? They'll, they'll show up if they really want the business. But last go around, when we had thrown dates out, we had right. offered some AM times and we had offered some PM mm -hmm. times. And did people? And that was across the board. Some people were like, yes, I can meet during the daytime. It's much easier for me. And others were like, well, I, I would prefer an evening meeting. Because mm -hmm. there were those who were like, okay, you know, I need to do regular business during those hours. So this is, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's what works for us, though. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that and if we want the full board to participate, it's going to have to be in the evening. Yeah, I would agree. And if we want to identify those dates now, we can. or. Um, it may make sense to um, have another round of discussion in executive session regarding some contract specifics. Do we have more information? Yes. We have more information, you have more than information. we have last time we talked. 
Do you want to get that? Trying to think of yes, actually yes. Okay. Yes, we do. do you want to put that put some you know put that together in your mind and then whatever you want to do and then we'll plan to do that on the ninth. Have that discussion. That's fine. Yep. Does that work. It does work. Yep. Okay. And then scheduling the. I think we want to probably schedule them. I know everybody pretty much holds Mondays open. Animal control, though. Oh, we're not moving on yet. I haven't done anything with that yet. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah so okay. then we, we can discuss and we can identify the potential dates. dates. Okay. So, we'll so everybody time. come prepared with calendars. It'd be good to try to keep them on Mondays because that's I know when everybody kind of has blocked off for select board if we can. And and then, I know everybody's not available on September 11th because that's always when they announce a new iPhone. So we'll see the lines we need. Um, <laughs> um, well, but we're not going to be we're not going to be able to look because we're going to have substantive possibly demo meetings, right? When we meet with them. I'm thinking we need to do them on off Mondays from regular board meetings. Well, and what I'm worried about is spreading it out too much that we don't remember from one to the other. I will uh, go. This is a, this that's is a discussion I, we will I have next week. Yeah, that's let's part have of that discussion week. because yeah. we want to if we allow, if we start, make our choices about right. who we want to talk to, but also with this additional information to consider. Okay. So great. Okay. All right. You want to do some minutes? Everybody review them, sign the warrants, did they? I have. Minutes. What do we got, Katie? We start on July 22nd. Okay. Oh, please. July 22nd. I think those are good to go now, but we'll look. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to approve the July 22nd minutes? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. glad that the sheriff said that, mm -hmm. that um, from a pedestrian perspective, mm -hmm. cars on dirt roads appear to be going faster because I could be I doing 30 and they're walking and they look at you like you're going hey, 90. Hey, hey, hey. What? Uh, Katie, mm -hmm. cars on dirt roads appear to be going faster uh, for flying down than they, it seems. Mm -hmm. than they, and then they appear. Okay. Then they just something you got you got too many words at the end. One of them's got to go. Like that. Yeah. That yeah. Works. No, that's not right. Uh, it's it's the opposite. Cars are roads appear to be going faster than they actually oh, are. Than they yes. actually. Than they actually are. <laughs> yes. 
That's when you know it's the reality. So good. The point, yeah, that was important. It's not in the sense with R, though. Then they actually are. Then, then in reality. Then they are. In actuality. Actually, it's not are, actually a preposition, though. It's an okay word. It just makes you uncomfortable. Oh, well, not if you change it to fastlier. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? I got, never mind. I the camera on. Okay. <laughs> okay, anything else? What else is there? That was to me. That was like when I think about what did the sheriff say. That's that the big one is that point. What were the other um, things? They who's said? driving? Cliff or Katie? Can you scroll down. I can just scroll down. I'm displaying Katie's entity. Okay. Um, scroll down more. Okay. More? I don't think there was an I don't think I had any more changes. Do we have, uh, yep, Road Commissioner will talk with Doug throughout. Mm -hmm. Which he told us tonight he did. Yep. Can, can, can we just read how the conversation about the union? Stuff. I'm sorry, I did not have a chance to look at these. Oh, Finney is F-I-N-N-I-E. I think I put that at the top. Oh, thanks. Yep. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, you so instead of that this will affect salary negotiation, just to be more clear and maybe Where not at yep. the bottom of that paragraph, the highway department has signed union cards and the board commented it will affect, just to be mm -hmm. more off that we're going to let that affect, um, I would say the board commented this means we will be negotiating with the highway department crew as a unit. That's what it means. And I don't think that's what we said though at the meeting. Uh, it's what we would have meant because we didn't mean that it's going to, well, what John said is that it's a is and we could be really clear about that what john said is um you start with a blank slate right in negotiating so we could say that as well i just don't want it to sound like we're going to be retaliatory no i don't think it does sound that way help help me out how should i um, um i guess i don't say think this will affect to, salary negotiations period to me when we say affect salary negotiating it sounds like it could be read that we have why would you say the highway department has signed a new card? This period? will impact the salary negotiation process. Why don't we just put a period after you? We could just say that and have nothing else. That's right. fine too. Let's yep. do that. Yep. Just keep and all. We don't have to. We don't have to keep all the clutter out of it. Right. Yep. It's just that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Period. I leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. Um, okay. Further down. It's Roads Committee, probably capitalized Roads Committee. Let's see. Reformation. Which number is it in? 11. Thank the you. board plans to seek to revitalize the Roads Committee. space in between two and seat. Okay. And I think 
that was pretty much it. What's on the last page? Guess that was it. All right. Everybody good with those? Yep. Yeah. So motion. <coughs> motion to approve the August 12 minutes with changes as discussed tonight. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, now I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Prior to that, um, may we what? discuss other business or oh. business do business? Do we have any? Apparently we do. I would just like to put into the minutes that the um, board is saddened at the loss of community member Richard Purchase and recognizes his valuable contributions to the town of Callis. Nicely done. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very nice service. I went, it was a packed Old West Church, standing room only. It was not at the end there, but yeah. I went to the reception in yeah. Mark yeah. yeah. was, was it a nice reception? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, and that was one of the things I wanted to. Well, you got the news while I was out there. Yeah. So, yeah. It was so, pretty yeah. quick. You said he had been sick for several weeks? He, he, He'd been in ICU, and um, it, they were just having a hard time figuring out what was going on. It was respiratory in nature, and they really got a handle on it. And unfortunately, his condition just deteriorated. Sounds a lot like Ernie's yeah. situation, uh, you know? Uh, I'm kind of unknown, yeah, unknown of stuff. Exactly. It's really just sad. Well, Ernie, it was, I think, his heart, because in the beginning, didn't they talk about him maybe needing a transplant? Well, but the condition, the way it, the Manifested, way it, yeah. the, man, the way it came about was they didn't know where it came from or why. Yeah. And it sounds very similar to her. His kids did a wonderful job. Speaking of you, um, they did a really nice job. It was very upbeat, which is nice. The pastor or reverend or whatever he was did a really nice job. Nancy said. Yeah. So I spoke to Nancy afterwards and gave her our regrets. And Another one I didn't know. No. So thank you. That would be nice to have in the, in yes, the minutes. Julia yeah. noted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other old business or new business? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session per 1DSA section 313A3 to discuss personnel matters. 8940. Yep. I don't think it'll take long. Second. Can we make copies of this? Um, I'm hoping that Cliff has it. I can call it up. I can call up the link. Yeah. 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 Ye